All right, hello everyone. Welcome. Uh, what's that? That light appears to be catching just very little. There we go. Green screens are nice. Green screens are wonderful, but they actually have to be in place for them to work properly. Welcome, welcome everyone. This is the Exxon Cup number thirteen coming at you live from well from the from my bedroom because that is in fact how these things go. We have a we have a good tournament already for the evening. I believe we, what do we have? Vanya, we have Cam, we have uh, who else? Who else do we have? Vanya, Cham, Nina, all these players that uh, it's 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 late for them. It's early for them. No, oh, special signed up at the last minute too. That is exciting. Uh, who do we got? Let's see. Uh, Nerazim Spy. Sure, let's go with that one. There we go. Now I can talk again. Now I can turn my, my my hardware mute off, and we are good to go. Now I'm excited for the this week because look, you notice that Exxon banner behind me, all right? That says that oh hey I'm a part of Exxon. I'm casting the Exxon Cup. That's exciting. But my jersey came in. Look at that. Wow, it's exciting. I can show up and I can rep the team that I'm I'm competing in or that I'm compete or that I'm not competing for that I'm commentating for for all you lovely people spread out around the world or perhaps no one at all. I don't know who I don't know how many people are watching right now but that's okay so right now it looks like we're gonna go with spy versus narazim in game ah for, yeah good I, I, yeah i did that okay um spy versus narazim for this game number one now of course uh what that means well uh, i actually i don't know who i'm not familiar with narazim he is that's right he he competed last week he's teamless he's from europe I think. Hmm. That rings a vague bell. It's a 1v1. Let's set that up. This is not from Alpha X. All right, so let's see. Vadina and Vanya are the stars of the bottom half of this bracket. It is Special and Cham on the upper. Actually, that's unfortunate. Special Cham. No, they don't. Okay, never mind. They mean the semis if they do meet. Wait, Special playing Zerg? See what I can bug spy here. All right, so yeah, we're just waiting on that, waiting to see what, uh, where our, well, <laughs> waiting to see where our player has gone. See, let's turn down the volume just a little while we wait for that to... Where's my voice meter? Where'd it go? Did I close it? Okay, it's back up. Um, okay, that sounds... Yeah, that should be good. Where, oh, where is our dear friend Spy? He is... See, a line. He's online in Discord, but that's all we are waiting on.
All right, so we're going to see where Spy is. Um, also, I've done a bunch of audio tweaking over the last 24, 48 hours, and I think everything's good. I think everything is working as intended, all those fun things. That being said, if I sound too loud, if I sound too quiet, if there are issues, please feel free to bug me in chat. Uh, let me know that, hey, well, Bayo, your audio quality sucks now, and then I'll go back to basics. But for the moment, I'm looking at things. I think I've, I've tested everything. It sounds good for my end. Um, but of course, at the end of the result, I'm a product. I'm not a I'm not a consumer. So uh, the whole goal is, if, you know, if, if you like what if you like what I'm doing, if you like what it sounds or doesn't like what it sounds, please feel free to let me know. That being said, where or where's our friend Spy? I pinged him on Discord. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, don't forget lobby link for casters, he says. Uh, it, it looks like it's, I'm peeking just a little bit in the red. Okay, this probably should be good. Um, Yeah, don't forget lobby, lobby link for casters, he said. That that requires, in fact, our games to be happening. And in order for that to happen, well, players need to show up and be there. So, yeah, we're waiting. I believe uh, Steadfast is the other stream that is happening. <laughs> Special says, can I get my free win, please? Ah, he showed up. Special opponent has shown up. Um, so it looks like special opponent has shown up, so that's what we're gonna go instead because I'm get I get impatient. I like seeing good Stark out. I don't like sitting here at the lobby screen and just dealing with all of that. So Boots and cats, and cats and boots. All right, so uh, while we sit here, we'll try to wait. What's how ah, lobby links? Special, the one true hero. Love him five ever. But anyway, uh, we have Nerozim versus Spy round one. That's the game I was trying to get into. Didn't happen. Um, um, special versus green is what's happening right now. Special has decided to play Zerg for this tournament. <laughs> That's going to be a fun time. I don't know if he's going to do it for the entire tournament or just for the opponents he does not expect too much of. Uh, Nace is nasty versus Endurance. Nace is a nasty is like a diamondish player. Endurance is a little higher, I think. Uh, then on the bottom side of the bracket, there's Ashbringer versus Winner uh, versus Remy. Winner plays Nina. That's actually a pretty high powered matchup for round two. Vanya plays uh, Faneri and Miksu plays Valis. But you know what? We should probably get on into this game number game number one of special versus green. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Spawning in the upper right in the blue. Playing Zerg this time for Team Exxon. It's special. And in the bottom left in the red, he's Protoss. He's teamless. It's green. Let's move this on. Not do that. Let's move this on down just a little. And 
why is this not doing anything at all? I don't know, but we're going to fix that. I apologize if sound has gone down for half a second. I'm just fixing something. So uh, something wasn't working all that well. Okay, anyway. I don't know why things are not working, but... uh, I'm gonna jump. Anyway, I don't know why things are not working, but we're going to deal with it for the time being. Because we're into game number one. You see an overlord coming across the map. You're special, not doing anything weird. Not doing anything crazy. Just going for your standard Zerg opener, which is interesting. I kind of expect a special to uh, maybe do go for something a little bit cheeky in the in these games. I mean, he's playing against a player that is supposedly, uh, I, yeah, I guess. So supposedly Diamond. However, you know, Green could be from a different server. You never know. All right, and we did see Dina get knocked out in round one two weeks ago, last week or two weeks ago, to a Masters player because she was playing Zerg against a Terran player. And I guess did not take it seriously enough. But of course, that's all that's all well and good. We do have special now. Coming in with a couple links, we are, we'll see this probe uh, do a rescout. Let me see what's up, what's, what, what is what. Well, I was just gonna find a couple drones. All right, so it uh, looks like these lings will most... Uh, actually, the probe's going to have to be a little bit careful here. This probe has the ability to escape. Depends on the acceleration, deceleration. Depends on the route it, the route it takes home. Because, of course, the drone is just barely fast enough to outrun the zerglings. Should it... Well, yeah, the zerglings just a little bit faster. But now the adept is here, which means the probes... The probe will die. Or I should say the probe will survive and the zerglings will die. Um, but this is just a little bit annoying here for, uh, for our red, uh, Protoss player. Well, that being said, I mean, yeah, this is not going to get a whole lot of, not with the two adepts here, but of course the Zerglings have forced the fact that there are now two adepts on the map. They have shown this, they've seen this, and Special says, ah, you know what, I don't really see much of a wall here. Actually, this is a rather weird wall. There's, I know there's no pylon to fully wall you off. So if you want to be able to defend this Link Flood that is coming, well, it's going to be, I got another thing coming for you, because Special, he's cut workers at 21... 21 drones and sure he's a little supply block but he's gonna have an overlord he's gonna have another uh, another hatchery in a second and now we have zerglings flooding across the map and sure there's this kind of like partial wall I, I believe uh yeah you can slip, slip slip through here and here and now the zerglings will get on top of everything we're gonna have the both adepts go down without really much of a fight at all not even really able to get a shot off and now what army does green have just about nothing yeah there's there's an immortal here on the way but that will get killed the pylon will go down with it, well, we don't even have Warp Gate. Warp Gate uh, canceled or delayed three seconds for finishing here. Now we just have Zerglings on top of Probe, and there is no army for Green. I mean, sure, there's an Immortal, but the Immortal is not done. And yeah, we see some gates on the way in the main base, but those gates are not here fast enough. <laughs> Hello, JLTT. Yes, I'm back on Twitch. I, uh, again, I'm. This is my preferred stream platform. But anyway, TT, Green taking your special taking game number one as Zerg this time. But anyway, why is that happening? I, I have the delay set properly. I think it's something to do with my encoder. I have swapped my encoder to NVENC because that streams StarCraft a whole lot better. And I can see the results, but uh, I need to ch once again change my... Change this even more. What? Let's call it just 2,000 milliseconds. That should be good enough. Anyway. I uh, also need to figure out why certain things are not doing what they should. Oh, hey, Spy did show up. Okay, well, doing what it should now. I don't know what was up with that. It's exciting. So, uh, I don't know what map steadfast... Oh, shoot. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Um...
All right, so yeah, we're just waiting on special versus green number two. As a special just kind of won with a link flood because the wall was not great, but uh, that's that's okay. These things happen. We're just waiting for the lobby for game number two to go on up here. So we can get on into it, get exciting. I may uh, I may have to kill this stream early. I have to be up pretty early tomorrow morning to run backup production for the King of Battles tournament. So if that happens, we're just going to host up steadfast because I don't know if Winter is going to be casting the finals, and that's probably when we would uh, probably when we would stop. But it's okay because uh, well. Uh, to do, uh, there we go. All right, so we have special. We have green. Game number two will be on Jagannatha, which means even if special is the better player here, even if, well, regardless, even if special did win game number one, Jagannatha, it's a long map. It takes a while to go. It takes a while to kill anyone. It's not quite as bad as, say, Ice and Chrome. And I say bad in the in the instance of it's not quite as big, it's not quite as long, it's not quite as expansive, it's not quite as easy to expand away from pressure as it, as ice and chrome is. But that being said, it's still a pretty good map, and our players are loaded into it. So let's go. All right, here we are spawning in the bottom left in the blue, up one game already in this best of three for Team Exxon. It's special. Why does that not render? And his opponent in the upper right, in the green, down one game. It's green. It's so weird. Whatever, I guess I'll deal with it later. I don't know. But uh, we should probably talk about... Well, actually, there's really not a whole lot to talk about in this game thus far. Uh, also, yeah, let me know. I, I moved my lights around. I think it's better. I think it looks better than it did previously. I think I got that quality down pat. And I don't think the hotspots are too bad. So anyway, uh, any sort of co comments, questions, concerns, worries about the, the setup, how things have changed, please feel free to, tell, to ping me and say, Hey, Bale, you're an idiot. You should be doing it this way. That's fine. Uh, I'm just kind of excited. I, I finally figured out how to get some things working. I moved some lights around so I didn't have this really annoying hot spot like right over right over here. There we go. Like right from that direction and like soft, too soft light from other there. So I had these I had the kind of flicker spots on my green screen and uh, my face was not lit fully. I looked kind of was in darkness when I got my settings right. So I actually was, you know, high, decent FPS. Um, actually looked decently and I think I may still have to up the gain just a little, just a tiny bit, but it's a lot better than it was. Anyway, we're uh, <laughs> talking about things that are not StarCraft, because really not a whole lot has happened in this game. I do not like this pylon positioning that Green has gone for in games number one, game number two. I don't believe this gives him room to power off his wall once again. And what we've seen special, special has no qualm. It's just kind of stopping at 21 workers. And, well, and just kind of flooding across the map with a bunch of speed links. And I don't think we're going to see it this game. But we very well might. The uh, you know, 21 workers is uh 21 workers is 28 supply. And yeah, this is gonna be a Stargate build from Green going into this game number two. Uh, which theoretically defends what Special did a little bit easier. Oracles do a great job of killing Zerglings, uh, and Immortals just kind of suck at it. So that may or may not be the case. Not really sure. Of course, it depends on execution as well. As we do have these Zerglings now, they're on their way on the uh, onto the other side of the map. They will they will see this adept adept is gonna go is gonna find them as well. That's the thing. And uh especially is gonna look for a surround will not be able to find one. And yeah we just see Zerglings on the way. The flood has commenced and special or special's doing a great job of drawing this adept away from where the speedling flood is going to come. Um as I say that again draws him right back into the middle of the map. But what he's trying to do here of course is draw them high ground low ground so he'll be able to surround the depth as it shade completes and then maybe kill it off. But uh, that's not really going to happen, as we just do have a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of Zerglings now running their way across the map. Oracle is three quarters of the way done, so there will be one Oracle to defend. And once again, the walls, this is such a weird way. Can you, is that a full wall? 
I guess that is a... Is that, that can't be a full wall, is it? I don't know, but, uh, well, whatever it is, Green has noticed the shenanigans. He knows this is coming. And, actually, I don't know if Special's gonna be able to get through here. Yep, yeah, okay, yeah, Special will not be able to bust through. 18 more lengths on the way, but he's hitting drones behind this. He says, you know what, I know this is not gonna work. But, you know, I can try, I can hope. But more importantly, I can put pressure on. I mean, it means that you cannot go and take the third base as quickly as you would like. And a uh, note special here, he's just trying to do what he can to tear things away. I would have liked to see him just kind of target the cyber core down, prevent the, uh, prevent the wall from going up. But no, he only has one oracle here. And uh, the nice thing about this, of course, special is sure, you know, he's losing some circlings. He did not get the, not get the drones out as early as he would have liked. However, uh, look how much he's forced here. We don't see a lot of this stuff getting canceled here. Green is terrified of what's happening. He's forced the Oracles to stay at home and spend all their energy at home. But sure, they're a great defensive unit, and Special did hardcore commit for that. Do not get me wrong. Green, by, by dint of holding this, is in a excellent position. That being said, he has perhaps overcommitted to this hold just a little. And actually, interesting enough, we see the Stalkers, they worked in on the outside, so okay. They are, they are in danger, so the Speedlings come in once again. And Special, while well, we, we do have spores on the main on the third, as well, hardly ever to do a spore crawler, to do spore crawlers get into the natural, but they do potentially on this map. This is a uh, very much like overgrowth in that way. But anyway, uh, so it looks like well, with with enough shield battery energy, stalkers will survive. Uh, speedlings will not really get a whole lot done. But again, what they're doing, they're forcing, they're, they're preventing Green from taking a third. They're preventing it from moving across the map with these oracles, and they are giving special free reign to drone up, to tech up, to kind of do whatever he wants. But again, this is droning up and teching up from a disadvantage. We noticed the special really only has one gas at the moment. Sure, he's three or three out of it, but all that's only just now happening. Yeah, <laughs> he was mining zero gas for quite a while. So sure, he's been doing a pretty good job of reestablishing his economy on the backside of things. But of course, he is behind it, and uh, Green has finally been able to take the third base. And in all honesty, get yeah, taking the, the third base at five minutes and 40 seconds in this game is not all that late, especially when we have double Colossus on the way to defend it. Any sort of uh, Zergling of pressure coming here from Special will be absolutely useless. I mean, Zerglings are great, but uh, they're not as good as Colossi. Some sort of Roach pressure might be able to help, but Special doesn't even have a lair on the way. Not yet. And sure, these, these, well, these oracles, they're good for clearing creep. I actually would have liked to see him snipe that tumor, but I, it looks like he was not paying attention right there. Again, sure, they're, they're good for doing things like that, but uh, for clearing creep, for maintaining vision of the army, they are not good at uh, dealing with all these queens. So really not going to be able to get a whole lot of damage. How many queens do we have? Yeah, eight queens on the map. Special overbuilding by by one or two compared to the standard uh, the standard player. And we, the one interesting, so, so we're seeing Colossi, we're, um, moving into disruptors behind things that's a pretty good deal but of course the trick is there is no extended thermal lance as i say that extended thermal lance now on the way as green just really dedicated himself to getting the colossi out to be able to defend any sort of link blood any sort of ensuing link blood and to make sure that that was the possible defense before he goes into well before he goes into kind of what he wants to go into here and uh, yeah again these oracles they're just going to look around and see what they can find again keep an eye out for what Special's army is doing. Spe uh, keep an eye out for what Special is doing. And again, I, I like the army of green so much more. A green still pretty much even to a head on economy to the Oracles. They're going to run in. Uh, they're going to run by. They're going to almost die. These Oracles absolutely could, could have uh, gotten some decent damage done. They had taken pretty much no hull damage. And it looks like Special's approach to dealing with things is to drop a Spire in a rather sneaky location. Yeah, at the third base. That will not be scouted all that quickly. As I know, we have a couple Zerglings. They're going to run in, try to see what they can get done. Not, uh, well, really not going to get anything done here with the Colossus, with the Disruptors sitting here. All balled up in the main base. This, uh, this charge lot does have to get out of the way, which is, uh, going to be, oh, probably not really be a big deal, but possible. Definitely possible. Definitely something that Green has to make sure that he deals with, just because, you know, you kind of want your, you kind of want your Disruptors to exist in the fight. So, again, the Zerglings, they're sharking around, trying to see what they can get done. Just gonna take some damage. They're really not gonna get in here for the time being. Green on top of things with this wall. That he's actually, this is really interesting. So he's going into immortals behind this, and you almost never see this. Oh, he doesn't need to really. He really needs to open this wall now. Any sort of aggression onto his third base is gonna be incredibly problematic. 
but he has failed to move out. He has said, you know what, I'm happy with what I ha what I got. I kind of don't want to move across the map. I think that's a scary, scary thing. I just want to defend and defend and defend. Get onto three bases. Uh, if he's going to do that, I would really like to see him go on the four bases. Actually, we, we were talking about how there is no support here. Well, there is, in fact, no support here. And 10, 11 workers are going to go down. Those oracles, I would have liked to see the second one saved, but uh, that was an incredible move. That was a lot of damage that he did right there. Granted, it's not the same as if he did that damage two, minute, two three minutes ago, but still. Definitely nothing to be ashamed of. The special only now is starting to take the supply lead. You gotta... There we go. He's noticed. <laughs> I feel... I, I worry that he's too late, though, because this is mass muta needling against... What? Against Colossus? Yeah, Colossus, I don't shoot up. There's really just... Uh, there, there are... Sti uh, wow. Well, Blink is only just halfway done. There are no st no Archons on the field. Yeah, okay, so the, the Mutas, they will just find all of these tasty, tasty Robo units. And everything's just going to go down here. Stalkers are going to do what they can, but of course, they don't have Blink. So now the Mutas, they're going to find a position on into the main base. It's only one cannon. It is no shield batteries. The Mutas are going to go to town, and all the Stalkers will be recalled. At which point, well, you just run down. You kill all the Stalkers that are there. And it's just Robo on the low ground. Unfortunately, Robo on the low ground is a absolutely not what you need. And I gotta, I cannot help but feel that that green, he just gave Special a little bit too much time. He says, you know what? I feel like I'm in a good position. I didn't die. I've been so far ahead this game. Uh, yeah, you don't want to trace the meters with your classes. That is not a good move. Now it looks like the we do have the meters. They're running out into the natural. They're like, oh, hey, we're friends, right? Yeah, friends with stalkers. When the stalkers are in this low numbers and the blink is not there, the micro is not really there yet. It's only plus one stalkers. Yeah, Mutas can absolutely take that fight. And it looks like we do have the robo ar the robo centric army of our red surge moving across the map. You know what? I don't really want to deal with these Mutas here. I'm going to force you to attack me. Now, Mutas are going to be able to jump on top of things. They will get they will get this. Uh, they will get the warp prism rather quickly, which means that, well, the all the robo units are going to go down, but they're taking not the best trade against all these stalkers. But they don't even have to take a good trade. They just have to take a passable one. And now the Zerglings, they're going to go, or Roaches actually, they're going to go in finding Stalkers on the reinforcement line here. And Special really just has too much. You can't just let a Zerg sit there, recover for five minutes, not not get it, not, and not tech up by yourself, not get into the next level of tech, and just kind of hope to win off of, well, just off of mass robo units. Because, yeah, sure, double robo is great. Don't get me wrong. That's absolutely something that can win games, but that's that's something that wants to win games at 8 minutes, not at 10 minutes, not when the Zerg has had plenty of opportunities to scout and to build into their desired attack choice that absolutely counters that. And yeah, I believe Green did not know that the Spire was up, and that's something that is unfortunate for him, but uh, again, you gotta know your timings, and you're not looking to hit a 10 minute timing with mass rebel units here. Now what I will say is Green, he does have the scarier army. For the most part, should the mute is not, well, should there just be enough stalkers? So now we have a significant amount. Well, we still have the yeah, we still have three Colossus. Somehow the three, all these Colossi and Immortals have not died. It's just in the Disruptors. So now we do have the Army of Green pushing in. And the question is whether Special will be able to make the defense. 22 Bailings on the way, but honestly, that's not a lot of Bailings. And we do have a decent amount of Stalkers. Now we do have Special He's looking to get in from every side. Once again, the Warp Prism will be taken out. This, the Army that Green has is the army that he will have forever in this game. Now we have computers rolling in. We have Bailey rolling in. But these force fields are pretty good. Unfortunately, the Colossi are not in position. And actually, yeah, it looks like the, the Muta counter is just going to be barely enough. The the, uh, the Rebel units on the ground, of course, they kill off the entire the ground army. But with so few stalkers left, the rest of the army of Green is forfeit. And with the army of Green forfeit as it is, well, looks like we did have Spectrum moving on to the next round. Game number one, he had a, he, he hit the speed lead timing. That was all he needed. Game number two didn't really work, but uh, he was given enough time to get into this mutiling Bane style and just kind of crush the army of his opponent. Too many mutas for the economy of Green, well, of Green to be able to pull off. And this one cost as well. It's it's doing it's doing a good job for, for itself. 28 kills, but I mean, what does that really matter? Especially still hitting, sitting here on five bases. Green going down to well, effectively, effectively two. He's only, only on 30 workers. And actually, it looks like the Muta and the Queens were able to kill off that anyways. I would see, like, like to see special poops from Creepier, but it doesn't really matter. As the Beetling army, well, is going to find itself dealing with some stuff, some Charlotte Warpins. And, well, that's when you know it's rough. Because Charlotte, do not shoot up there. And I'm special moving on to the next round of this tournament. All right. 
Special did the thing. He scored the points. Uh, to do what was I doing that's what I was doing hmm that seems like something useful and important and exciting yes I was doing this oh that's what it is I had the wrong URL because I reinstalled casting tool that would in fact do things so yeah we're going to load this back up into this one Add it as a browser source. Nah. It's not going to work either. Um, well, I will I kind of sit here and fix things. So it's going to be Nerezim versus Cham. Uh, oh, okay. So Spy didn't show up. Nerezim just took the walk over. Special's going to play Nasus. Uh, Nasus walked over Endurance. To this copy local URL to clipboard. That should do it. And we're going to change this. Player intro, be this. I don't know why this is not working. This has always worked in the past. Well, you know what? We're just going to do it the old, old, old fashioned way. Well, we banned the bots. Nice. We ban <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to buy followers. What the heck? No. Why would I do that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, this, this should do it. I mean, I've, we're, I've used this for a while now. Okay, we're just going to hope, hope and pray. I don't know what OBS is doing. Maybe this is some bug with OBS 20-odd something. All right. Yeah, we have, uh, we're, we're getting ready to go. All right. Uh, to do, to do, to do. Players loaded into map number one. Let's update this and hope it works. All right, so our players, they're loaded in to this, in fact, game number one. Very sad. 
There we go. Okay, we're back to normal. No black screen. Let's get into game number one. Alrighty then, here we go. Spawning in the bottom left. In the blue for Team Exxon. He's the Zerg. He's special. Hey, look, it works. And his opponent in the upper right. In the red for Cloud M Gaming. It's Nasty Naz. I've been fighting with that thing not working since halfway through the King of Battles qualifier, so like two weeks, and finally we have it working all the way. This could not excite me any more than it already is. As we do have Nasty Naz going for a Forge first expand here. What an anachronism. I think, it's, I think we're back in 2012. Not even 2012. Two gate four. I apologize, pardon my confusion. This is a two gate forge opener. I think from Nasty Naz here. And is he going to attempt a cannon rush? I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. I also don't think it's gonna work. I mean, if you're doing a two gate cannon rush, you'll build the gates with the cannons. And then that you go in and you kind of, you just get up, you get a cyber core at home, you get a bunch of stalkers and that's how you try to win. But no, this is his expand build. And again, this is just such a massive anachronism here. As well, we're just gonna have the, the probe's gonna sit there. It's like, hi, hi drones. Do you wanna be friends? Do you wanna free, be friends with me? Do you want. Do you like making love at midnight? You like the taste of champagne. Uh, the feel of the ocean. And the taste of champagne. Don't really know because uh, the Zer. You know, see, unfortunately, drones. Drones speak in binary. They are robots after all. Or probes speak in binary. They're robots after all. And uh, drones speak in kind of weird garbled language. That I don't really know what that is. It's okay because we're just gonna have the probe sitting here. And this is so weird. This wall. There's no natural. He has bought two gates. He has a cyber core with, with warp gate on the way. He has a shield battery in this this, this wall. There's no natural. Things can let's complete. He's trying to he's going in for a full wall here. Um, yeah, he's not gonna die to the, the speedlings, but I mean, special's not even going for that. This is the earliest possible Nidus, or earliest possible layer, which means he's going Nidus, Nidus, Nidus. We only see, as we do only see two guesses on the map at the moment. So yeah, these earlings, they're just gonna sit here. You're gonna say, hey dude, what you doing? What you planning on building two shield batteries, but, and a cannon with no natural. I really don't know, but yeah, the, uh, okay, so one benefit that Nasty Naz has got going here is he's sitting here on 23 workers, and uh, for those of you at home, the Zerg, the Protoss should pretty much always be head on workers up until the Zerg gets three bases uh, and three queens, fully get kind of past that first couple inject cycles, so you really don't see that that not, that massive economy explosion until about five minutes on into the game. And special, interestingly enough, yeah, he's just using up to, oh, okay, so we're going Swarm Host Nidus, or the very least Swarm Host. Um, as he's just droning up here to make sure, I want to say this is just to make sure that he has full saturation. Do you, can you afford Swarm Host on three gas? I think you kind of want four, don't you? Swarm Host are incredibly gas expensive. Huh. Well, you know what? I got news for you good folks at home. We have natural. It's on the way. And what does Nasty Nass have? Well, he has two pylons here. And very clearly, something is going to be built there. Actually, a lot of something is going to be built there because, of course, two pylons. And what you do, you see, you do see a lot of protests. They go, they build pylon, pylon, pylon out, and they build, you know, gates or whatever tech around there. This nice long innovation corridor, as it were. And we have special going into hive up of three gas. Is he doing overlord drops? Or sorry, is he doing ultra drops? I think we have special going for ultra list drops here. No upgrades, but of course, when you're four minutes into the game, five minutes into the game, upgrades don't really matter. And Ultras do incredible against this entire army that we see here from Nasty Naz. Yeah, so it looks like third base is on the way. Eleven more drones on the way here. And I think we're going to see Overlord drops. Overlord drops are going to be fighting Dark Templar. This... This, this, this game looks like something I would see submitted to Husky. You know... 
however many years ago that is, it looks like Special's very prepared to drop that, that Ultra the Scavern. He's very prepared indeed. I don't know what that drone's doing. But yeah, this feels like something that, you know, you see day, in a Day 9 Daily or uh, Bronze League Heroes or something, but no, Special's a pro player. Hey, there we go. We got the Ultra Cabin on. We have Overlord. We have Ultra List drops on the way here in this game, number one. And, uh, yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> I am so excited right now. Yeah, so it looks like this Overlord's going to just peek, a bit, peek back to so make sure that it does not die to things. And we just have this army in front. And Nasty Nasty is like, he's got to be thinking to himself, hey, look, I'm doing great. I have not died to anything special thrown at me. I'm absolutely okay. I, the Link Slud didn't happen. I'm going to win this game, or at least I'm, I'm even. It's going to be fine. But uh, I got news for Nasty Ness here. This is not a holdout challenge that, of the type that Base Trade TV does, where you just kind of you, you try to live as long as you can and eventually die, and the pro player is trying to kill you as fast as possible. No. This is a game where Special is going to be dropping Ultralisks into the main base of Nasty Ness, foregoing all of this totally BS whatsoever. There do we have three. We should have a four because I believe it's one Ultralisk per Overlord Cocoon. I believe that's the math. Again, I don't play with Ultra Ultra Drop, so I don't really know. Now this drop is gonna get some nice damage to my core, especially lost 60 out workers. He's fine, he can lose as much as he wants, his opponent doesn't really have anything. The shades aren't even out, no worries there. Then this drop will Yeah, okay, so we're gonna see some Dark Templar warped in now. Special should be aware of this. But actually, this is getting decent amounts amounts done here. Uh, special does need an overseer. There we go. Okay, the overseer is sitting here, sitting in the natural. And the big deal with this, of course, is Nasty Nass has noticed the fact that there are overlords on the map. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're not gonna get that. Ultralisks killing everything, and now we're gonna see ultra drops. Yes, it's one ultralisk per overlord, so we need a fourth overlord turned into a drop overlord. And I would like to see the queens pull up into the main here to deal with this. I'll, although I think we're just gonna see this ultra. Well, I think this ultra is drop defense. <laughs> What is happening? So yeah, the Ultra will just get on top of the Dark Templar. And Dark Templar will die just like that. We have the Dropper Lord on the way. Beauties, my precious. They're going to go in. They're going to do what they can. And it does not look like Nasty Naz has responded to this whatsoever. Ultra Ultra is moving across the map. Ultra is going to be dropped here into the main. And sure, Ultras don't have any upgrades, but it's about 40 supply to 136. And there's no gas. <laughs> Nasty has doesn't even have a gas on his natural. He's not been building probes this entire time. And the ultra drop commences. The big chonky DT boys. Uh, we do of course have one of these drop lords morphing into an overseer just so the DT warpers don't do anything. And yeah, we have ultras at the front. We have ultras at the side. Charge of course, is pretty decent against ultra. Uh, Charge less doctor, pretty decent against ultras. They they serve as a nice way of making sure the ultras don't. Uh, I make sure they don't make contact with stalkers, but that that is not done. Ultras in the main. Ultras in the open field, Ned. Ultras in the open field. And ultras in the open field are terrifying, terrifying things to do. Now they have found the main base. They have found the natural. They have found the probe line. Each swipe of these Kaiser blades, because that's actually what the attack is called. The more you know, uh, more and more probes are going down here. Nasty Ness comes to terms with the fact that he has been ultra dropped to death, sitting here on six workers and two probes. He says. Kill me, man. Kill me. He's going to drop out without a GG in this game number one. That happened. All right, game number two will be on Light Shade. We have a 1-0 lead for our... Uh... <laughs> um, all right, game number two will be on Light Shade. It's a bit shorter of a map. And actually, I believe it, it, Light Shade has the same rush distance as, as Submarine. I think someone was saying that it was like 23 seconds natural to natural on that. So the Link Blood, 
Well, actually, you know what? If Nasty Nas is going to be as turtly as he is in this game, as turtly as he was in game number one, I actually don't think a Link Blood will work. Uh, we might see... I wouldn't be surprised if... With that specific build. So, when you see a Forge Fast expand and you're a Zerg player, you say, hey, wow, my Protoss opponent is doing a... For my Protoss opponent is doing a Forge Fast expand. How do I deal with this? What can I do? That's a little bit greedy. Well, the minute you scout it, you drop a Roach Warren, you get, you get, the, get you, you go off one gas, you do a uh, Roach Ravager laying all in, you kind of kill him because, well, cannons are, are, are outranged by Ravagers, and that's all the defense you have on that early game. But as we talk about that, as we talk about these fun and exciting and interactive strategies that Special is pulling out here, we should probably talk about the fact that game number one, it's in, and let's go. Alrighty, alrighty, here we are, spawning the upper left in the blue for Team Exxon. It's the Zerg for once. It's Special. And his opponent in the bottom right. In the red, suffering from a case of Ultra Dropitis. In game number one, it's Nasty Naz. So, gateway, gateway, double gate. Uh, this is not a PvP, Nasty Naz. You don't want to wall your high ground here. Especially with this pylon. This is a, is this a full wall? Nasty Naz has succeeded in fully walling himself into one base place. He does double gas before Cyber. So we're going to see some tech coming out here. But generally you see one gate. If you're, if you're doing that, it's, it's a one gate build. It's not a two gate build. And I'm excited to see what shenanigans we have here as well. Actually, it feels like Nasty Naz may have found the, uh, has may have won the build order roulette in this game number two. As well, special. He's going for that 19 worker. Uh, eventually, that's a lot of gas early. May even be, be may even be less than that. Looks like yeah, special. He's he's cut drones. He's gonna start building roaches ASAP. And then we do have a bunch of workers. So this is the 15 worker roach all in, roach ravager all in. Uh, presumably some ravagers, but at the moment just roaches. Moving, we're gonna find their way moving across the map here. And this is gonna hit before warp gate is done. Absolutely hit before warp gate is done. And Nasty Naz, okay, let's see. He's sitting here on about 100 gas. Warp Gate's on the way, which means it's most likely not Stargate. But uh, again, Nasty Naz, he's throwing out some weird builds in times prior. I need to update my team. My I need to update the TL.net event page. That's unfortunate. But anyway, we do have Robo on the way here as well. Sorry about that. So it looks like these two adepts... They run, they run into these Ravagers, and Ravagers, they just kind of kill adepts. But this is nice for warning for Nasty Naz, at the very least. Especially he's going to drop the vials. He's going to drop them into it on the A move. Special, you dirty, dirty devil. You dirty dog. Something like that. Special is the goat, in fact. Um. Bob, Bob, Black Sheep. Have you any wool? Believe it or not, goats have wool as well. Okay, so the first pylon will go down. Second pylon, of course, will not end that. I believe it's a full wall even without that. So these stalkers are going to get out. I would like to see... Okay, there we go. He's going to pile that pylon down. And there we go. He's going to pull back the injured raptor. Do what it can. A nice pullback marker here from Special. And uh, yeah, we don't have Nasty Naz targeting things. And yeah, the raptors... Okay, so they will be able to get the second pylon before any sort of... Any other shenanigans come out. And this, by dint of the first pylon dying, dying is Nartosis pylon, which means that there is no production. There is no warp gate. Or it's not going to finish. And special is just going to die. Or special is just going to kind of kill his opponent. And we have a GG. Nasty Naz top tapping out without a GG. And special moves moves on to play the winner of Nerezim Cham. Cham 2 of Nerezim? Or Nerezim 2 Ocham? Oh, that's why I'm surprised. So, we're going to hold semis. I believe we hold semis. So Nina Ashbringer is happening right now.
Check for Vanya Mixu. Looks like that's not happening. Or it's happening, I, I should say. It's looks like it's we're not in there at the moment. So we're sitting here. Uh I love this. Apparently I have two profiles. Um and yeah, there we go. Uh that's annoying. It always shows up like, ah, oh, choose your profile. I'm like, I have. I, I know what I want. And, and Battle Net Delnet says, no, no, no. You don't know what you want. You don't know anything at all. And I think we actually have to go to a break here because we're waiting for the lower bracket to complete. Jenison's the admin on that, actually. All right, so uh, yeah, we uh, we're waiting for the lower bracket to catch up with the upper bracket. Upper bracket had a decent amount of walkovers in the first round. But yeah, Nerezim certainly up and coming. Two zeroing Cham is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I don't know what the games look like. I would love to take a look. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to go to a break, I think, as a fly, as a fruit fly flies in my face. That's fun. I don't, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to get Vanya Mixu, Vanya, Vanya, Vanya. I don't have Vanya on my crystal signals. I don't think. So, games move along at a quick pace. Okay, there we go. Share the message. Uh... We may get Vani Mixu. That may be a thing, but regardless, we are going to go to a break for a bit as we wait to see what's going to happen there. I think, you know, there's a high likelihood. I think there is a high likelihood that we see... If Nerezim continues playing how he does, I mean, be, beating Champ 2-0 in, in PBZ is, is no... Absolutely. No small feat. He is a... Yeah, he's a Protoss player, right? Yeah, he is. Um, and Champ continues to play Zerg. Well... That's not that's not gonna be I do think I do think we do see Nerezim beat beat special there. At which point Nerezim's in the finals play, probably plays Nina. Plays Nina or Vanya. And then we uh we go from there. I do know that that Nerezim versus uh or well, not Cham. I keep thinking Cham's in the semis because that's what you would expect, but that's not the case. I do know that Nerezim versus special game one will be Pillars of Gold. But beyond that, I don't I do know. So we're going to go to a break. That's not what I want. Grips. There we go. Short is a five minute countdown. We'll edit that as we need to. And yeah, we're going to a break. When we come back, semifinals, maybe Vanya Mixu. I don't know. You'll see the stream title update. It's going to tell you enough. Uh, we'll be back. Don't go anywhere.
Okay, 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 okay. Where did special Nerazimer plan? I'm gonna be really, really sad. We're kind of back. We're kind of back. We have uh, Nerazim. We have Special. Ah, look, Special. He joined the lobby as well. And this is going to be our semi-final one, I think. We're going to wait for Steadfast. Okay. So lobby has been made. Steadfast is in. A massive shout out to the, the Steadfast man. Uh, anyways, we do have Steadfast in the lobby with us. It's going to be Exxon. Or, uh, not Exxon. Special is player. Special, of course, playing for Exxon against Nerazim, who really has had some incredible... Uh, Nerazim has had some incredible runs rather recently. Um, he had a great run last week. I forget about it. Did he beat Nina? He went pretty deep last week, and here he is beating uh, two Zoring Cham. I don't know if he has what it what it takes at this point to take out Special, although Special is playing Zerg, so everything I know, everything I know about what's going to happen here is potentially a lie. I see X on cup number 12. Nerazim had a deep run in that. Oh yeah, he 2-1 two two Vanya, and then he lost 0-2 to Nina. Okay. Okay, we have the go go. We have the go go button. And that means some fun, fun, fun things here coming for our players. It's Nerazim. It's special. It is the update? It is. Yep. Nerazim is special. Game number one coming in on Pillars of Gold as soon as everyone loads in, which hopefully. It's going to be no time at all, as I believe we're waiting. Uh, one of the casters is is holding things up. You have everyone kind of hung on that forty percent bar that says that ah, someone's not someone's not told the server that they're ready as of yet. There we go, have it. Everyone now loading in, and there we go. We have the countdown in my ear. It's game number one. Let's go. Here we are spawning in the bottom left. In the red, the Slayer of Cham himself. It's Nerazim. And his opponent in the upper right, in the blue, for Team Exxon. Playing Terran this time. He's not messing around anymore. It's special. That's actually a good question. Right? I actually don't know. I don't believe there are tournament rules for this. So special just kind of does what he wants. But um, swapping races between best of threes, that should be okay. I mean, that's that's happened in MLQ before. Special swapping races in between actual games. You know, you remember Scarlet DRG where she dropped the that unstoppable seven gate all in in game two on what was it Frost? Yeah, on Frost, killed him and then went on to make that. I think was the the quarterfinals. Sorry, that was an open bracket tournament, so not quarterfinals, but maybe like the round four, I think. That was when Scarlet was on one of her just dominant upswings. But anyway, of course, we do see this probe coming from Nerazim on the other way across the map. Just, you know what? Hey, special. You, uh, you're you playing a different race this time. You're playing the race you actually that I actually should be afraid of. Hey, thank you for showing me that respect. First and foremost, thank you for the respect for me. But why can't you have played Zerg, man? <laughs> why can't you play the race that I just beat, Ch but that I just beat a pro player? In that matchup, like, oh, come on. Unfortunate. But, you know, as a, as a competitor, as a pro player, you gotta be you gotta be prepared to beat just about everyone. Next, nice little juke there from Nerazim. He's gonna be able to get back in once again, but of course, the big deal is that Special was able to get his natural down without too much complaint, without too much difficulty whatsoever. And yeah, Special is just gonna keep, notice he is working his way around the probe, so he's gonna be able to take a couple extra shots on the probe. 
as uh, the probe eventually has to go home, which means that the probe has to leave a little bit sooner. Really need to stop slouching in my chair. These are important things. Important things indeed. Don't get me wrong. Slouching is comfortable, but uh, A, it's not great long in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, we do have the reapers now. I'm going to go in. Uh, it will, of course, force a probe pull for the time being until the adept can get to where it needs to be. And yeah, so the, the, this this uh, or this or uh, reaper actually going to be able to get a probe. Just barely not. It's just good micro there from Nerezim. Good micro from Special, too. And especially or Nerezim, just got to be careful. That could very easily could have been a dead probe there. And I don't... Okay, there we go. He's going to try. Will not succeed, but there are three probes sitting here in the mineral line of Nerezim that are doing absolutely nothing. That's kind of not the situation you want to be in here. As you are, as the Burrow player, you have a worker up, uh, advantage early. And that is exactly something, absolutely something you want to take advantage of. Now, Reaper harass from Special did just enough to force Nerezim off his game just slightly. I mean, we do have a couple of depths moving across them, and I don't really think they're going to be able to get any... They, they could... They, they do have the potential to go shade behind the mineral line and uh, deny mining from there. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. Actually, no, they're just going to go... Yeah, okay. That's exactly what they're going to do. One's actually barely not going to make it in. And I honestly... I, I think I would have just preferred to see them go shade behind the mineral line, deny mining for just a little bit, hopefully kill the mule off. And today I learned that mules have more... have 30%, uh, 33% more HP than an SCV does. Hmm. The more you know. We should probably talk about what's happening here as Nerezim, he's going for a real fast third base. This is an incredibly fast third base. And sure, he's going Phoenix behind it. And Phoenix do mean that you can hold off Terran aggression, Zerg aggression, whatever. Going Stargate does mean that you can hold off aggression from your opponent maybe a little bit earlier. So we do have this Oracle now moving on into the main base. And do we have... There's absolutely nothing here, but... Well, Nerezim is just to get me a little bit scared. Yeah, there's no... There's no wood of mine there. So Nerezim just going to be a little bit scared, wants to make sure that he knows what's happening above all else. And yeah, the Cyclone's out now, but man, Nerezim absolutely, Nerezim absolutely could have gotten something done there. Could have wiped that mineral line out, forced the pull. And now he's in a bit of a scary situation here, as the Cyclone will be able to lock onto this, the Phoenix, and Galloway will remove most of the damage. But this is a decently scary push from Special, just by itself. There are no shield batteries only is now coming in, and one of death's going to go down already. We do have... Well, that's especially going to back up in the moment. Just going to go what, do what he can to try to knock down the Stargate units. At least take some damage off of them. And, uh, yeah, so what do we have? These, okay, so we have Vikings and more Marines here on the way. And it looks like this third base should get canceled. Yeah, we'll get canceled at the very last second. And so, okay, so we did have the Stargate, uh, the Stargate units moving across the map here. But Special just in a really good position where he says, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care that you have two batteries. I don't really care that you have uh, Stargate units. Stalkers or... The Marines and Cyclones are incredible against against Oracles, against Phoenixes, against all these things. And sure, you got some shield batteries. That's nice, but you only have four of them, and I I have heal, I'm healing for myself as well. As this entire Terran army does a great job of just kind of killing things. And uh, the Phoenixes are doing what they can. Don't get me wrong, but no, no more Phoenix on the way here. As all the shield batteries, they have run out of energy, and this last Phoenix will just barely not go down. A nice, a nice job on that station job, by the way. I, I didn't even see it go down. But really nice job for Social there. Only moves one Marine and make sure it doesn't lose anything whatsoever. And uh, now we do have this shield battery in return doing what it can, but we now we have the Marines on into the main base. We have the probes, the probes now being pulled. And this is maybe... Yeah, no, okay, no. With the stalkers, they are getting warped in, but it feels like just special is rallying in more and more. And what he's rallying in is just too much. This timing, well, there is even just a little bit too greedy. And of course, we have this special has more work. And that's going to be enough to get special. It's going to take game number one. All right. There we go. Special taking game number one in style with some great aplomb. And uh, I should take a moment to point out about that. Well, there is a prize pool for this tournament sponsored by Tantalizing Terrariums. Uh, sponsored by Tantalizing Terrariums, right down here. I forgot that I'd mirrored my camera, so I actually, where I look at on my preview screen, 
is actually where my hand is. So I don't have to like cross myself over this time. Uh, anyway, yeah, Tantalizing Terrariums is this sponsor of this prize pool. And so we do move into game number two now. But anyway, Tantalizing Terrariums, they're awesome. They make some really cool Pokemon-inspired... Uh, wow, English, please. Thank you. Some really cool Pokemon-inspired Terrariums. Uh, they you look them up. Um, I should have a link in Nightbot, but I don't because I'm bad at what I do. But anyway, they do make some really cool Terrariums. I believe the uh, the company also, or the guy that does that, um, the couple that does that, they also run a gaming a gaming shop in SoCal somewhere. So if you like what they do, I cannot remember what it's called for the moment. That being said, we're loading into game number two. Let's get into it. All right, then here we are spawning the bottom left in the red. Uh, down one game, not up one game. In the red, for himself and himself alone, it's Nerazim. And his opponent from Team Exxon in the blue. He's the Terran. He is special. Or as they say, spam your door spam that Dorito to help Juanita. I actually don't know whether uh, that emote comes from, whether that is in fact a Twitch thing, whether that's just kind of part of Twitch. Or whether that is something that, well, you just kind of see elsewhere. So, man, I have learned, I'm so happy. I've, I've, I've learned some things recently about how how to make sure things don't lag and running running this on nvenc uh, as the encoder and making sure run is administrator gotta get the stream buttery 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 smooth actually especially gotta be careful over this scv is only on five health uh, but of course the probes will force it away and actually interestingly enough this is going to be a Marine opening coming out of special and not a Reaper opening, despite getting that gas. Just wants to make sure he is able to get into. I'll just get his orbital, get his factory ASAP. Doesn't really want to spend the money on the Reaper that he really won't find a lot of use for there. Reaper and reactor, go reactor going down as well. So I think we're going to hit see special hit with a rather quick uh, Marine, or rather hit uh, something done. Uh, this could, of course, be just building a bunch of Marines moving across the map like he did game number one. This could also be for Heli. It's actually, the more that I think of it, I think about it, I think this is going to be for maybe more something like a Hellion drop. I don't know yet. Unconfirmed. Actually, considering the, the factory location, I don't think we're going to see a react. I don't think we're going to see an add-on swap all that quickly. Anyways, uh, what do we have here from our Protoss player? Well, there is no Reaper Cliff, uh, Wall Cliff. Actually, I don't even know if you need to. Is this? But yeah, so I guess you wall off right there. Or the Reaper Cliff. Don't really have the maps memorized quite yet. Quite as of yet. And Oxide, of course, it's a cool map. The uh, There is a fairly direct route, but you gotta kill some rocks to do it. Otherwise, it's a little bit longer of a rush distance from natural to natural, even if the map itself is fairly small. So, of course, the question is, what are we gonna see happen on it? So, we do have one on one coming in here for special at this point. He just reacts to his operations, make sure he is absolutely safe safe and sound dandy as all dandy as i'll get out and behind this what looks like gas count yeah i think we're just gonna see blink yeah they got blink a couple more gates and we're gonna see this the parting style of play coming from narazim in this game number two says you know what i want to put some pressure on you i want to be able to defend the type of uh the type of attack you kind of hit me with in that game number one i want to make sure i don't die to it but it looks like Special, once again, he's gearing up for just the type of thing. Where, yeah, there we go. Medivac on the way. And Special's getting ready to hit with probably, what, two tanks? Uh, yeah, 16 Marines, two Medivacs. Something like that. And moving across the map, do that terrifying push that you, we see Terrans doing more and more often here. Okay, one tank on the way. Yeah, second one. Okay, actually, Special supply blocked here for a decent amount of time. It is on the way, so no, not, not the biggest of deals, but there we go. Second tank. And yeah, we're going to see a push coming in sooner rather than later. And this is interesting. Narazim going for three more gates, which of course means that he says, well, oh, he's going all in. 
This is a, what's the seven gate blink all in here? Coming from our red road player says, you know what? I know your proclivities. I know what you like. And I want to punish you for it because of course this build from special, it does not get stimmed for just about a year and a day. Perhaps two years, perhaps two years and two days. And that being the case, actually we do, the, the stalker has found the, has found the SCPs that are built, which is really nice. Because of course these, the SCPs, they're here to repair, but they're also to build bunkers. And with the lack of, well, with the lack of SCPs, those bunkers will not happen. Of course, the Marines will catch the stalker before the bunk, before the blink is done. But now blink is just about done here. And it, I think, okay, the tanks are just going to appear dropped off the top of these stalkers. Special, the man without fear. But I can't imagine this is really going to work, especially, I mean, we have seven gate blink here coming from our red Royal flare. And yeah, okay, well, he's going to blink back and he's going to lose that stalker just the same. So that what do we have? An immortal out here. Now it's six gate blank functionally. That's actually going to be able to take out the front. We do have more medevac. I actually have liberators in the way here, and that's when it gets a little bit scary because of course tanks and liberators they they work really well together. So now these the submarines, well, there's not a whole lot, and actually we really need to see some good blink micro here for Nerezine, and we're just not seeing it quite yet. So the liberator is seeping up on top of these marines, which of course means that any sort of blink on top of you, you any sort of blink on top of this army, well, you suffer from two tanks and you suffer from liberator. And it looks like here's just gonna be able to force you up the nat. I mean, this is enough damage in and of itself. Now the tank is not seized up quite yet, but the stalker they blink on top of this liberator. They get one tank. They get the they get the liberator, but at what cost? Here the second tank is sieged. And we do see a couple of stalkers, stalkers warping in, but Nerezi just doesn't have the money. Sure, they blink on top of the tank, but it's not gonna be enough. Not Moving on to the final. Well, you would think seven gate blink would beat that, but uh, I think it just hit a little bit too late. Nerezi threw away just a little bit too much. And special. He moves on to the finals. Special fooling around in the first couple of rounds of this tournament. No, no, no. Not anymore. All right, up next, I believe we are Nina versus Vanya. All right, so it looks like we're going to have Nina Vanya next. Okay, so we're just waiting on... Looks like Nina is in a game at the moment. So that's what we're waiting on. Hope everyone's having a wonderful, exciting, nice, whatever whatever words you want to use, evening here. Um, anyone watching the debate? The, the VP debate? How's that going? 
I unfortunately am I'm watching this, so I'm not or I'm I'm casting this, so I'm not watching that, which means uh I guess I'm missing out a little, but we got some good games. We sh- uh Nina versus Ch- versus Vanya should be our best series yet. And then special versus the winner of Nina Vanya is also going to be pretty special. Uh yeah, I went there. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. But anyway, uh, while we wait for Nina for Nina Vanya to, to get started, we need to get out of our game. We're just going to go to a quick break. And when we are back, well, it's going to be Nina. It's going to be Vanya. It's going to be the semifinals. Don't go anywhere. All right, we are back. Welcome, welcome, everyone, indeed. As uh, we are just about here. We're just about ready. Nina versus Vanya, as soon as Vanya joins the lobby. So our second semifinals of, day, of the day, of course, this is a best of three. But the good news is uh, while this is a best of three, the finals will be a best of five. Now, of course, players, they've hit this point. They are not out of the money. They are, in fact, in the money, regardless of what happens, actually. Let me take a look at things. I believe it goes further than that, actually. It goes a little deeper. 
Actually, that is not correct. I'm sorry. Third place gets paid out. Fourth place does not. But the, the prize vamp is pretty significant. Uh, so let's see. 30 bucks is first place. $15 is second place, $5 is third place, and fourth base, fourth place only gets some OSC points. All right, so looks like we're just about ready. Uh, okay, there we go. I heard, I saw the going thing, and going, going, gone. Goodbye. Although, please don't go away. Please stay here. Please say hello. You say goodbye. I say hello. Hello, hello, hello. As uh, Nina, Vanya, they're getting into this game number one will be on death, or I believe game number two will be pillars of gold. And Vanya did absolutely PM this to me, and I absolutely forget what he said. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I mean, they're going to play the maps and we're going to talk about the maps and we're going to learn exactly what our players have in store for us in this series. But more importantly, in this game, number one, because our players, they're now loaded in. All righty, then here we are spawning the bottom right in the red for Team Exxon in the red. It's Nina. And her opponent in the blue for B100 Esports. He is the Russian sensation in the blue. It's Vanya. Let me mute that. I thought I had that muted. There we go. All kinds of fixed. And now we have a game going on here. Nina going for the most conventional. PBC span expand you could choose whose dimension. Now I only point this out in the particular because we saw those nasty nas games. Or we saw more shield batteries than one could shake a stick at. Yeah, we're an opener, but uh, Nina, well, she is a professional level player. And while I'm sure she has some weird builds, nothing that weird. No Forge Fast Expand. No Forge Fast Expand with Double Gate into a lack of a wall. I can see that. Although she does like her cannon, so we may see her cannon Vanya in game number two. Game number one, though, will not happen. She might fake it, of course. There are... You can absolutely drop a cannon down. Or even just make your probe look a little bit suspicious and say, Hey, Vanya, look what I'm going to do. But no, that's not what she's going to do. She's going to go in. She sees the natural is on the way. And that's pretty much all she needs to know. So, I mean, there are, sure, she, there could be a bunch of lings on the way, but... Wouldn't be all that great, to be totally honest. And we do have Nina here on, confirming that there is a third base down at 20 supplies. Of course, Vanya, the Russian, going for the Korean style of uh, the opener. So again, there are two styles. One gets more queens early, and they take and you take your natural at about 23 odd supply, give or take. Or sorry, 28 supply, uh, give or take 28, 30, 32. Um, that's when you take third base. And then there's the Korean style, which sacrifices a queen in exchange for getting that third up that much faster, which means there's more creep. Uh, you've had a better chance to defend, but on the flip side, you maybe don't have as many drones as early. Kind of six one way, half dozen the other. Doesn't really impact things one way or the other. I mean, both both are absolutely viable. You see Zergs winning with both both styles pretty easily. And we got the, the creep tumor going down here. As uh, really in the early game, you don't have enough larva to sustain double injects. Not really. Not everything else you're doing, not with uh, all the queens you're getting on all that. Now we do have the first adept of Nina. Gonna go in, try to see what can get done, and the answer is should not really be a whole lot. There, there are, should be enough zerglings. Actually, yeah, the zerglings. They're only just now completing. But Vanya says, you know what? If I go in here, I don't go. Or Nina says, you know, if I go in here, I don't go out. And that is absolutely not worth it to me. As we see, uh, Vanya on the bleeding edge of creep here. Get the two are pretty much the maximum possible distance. Minor efficiencies does not make a difference in the grand scheme of things. The end of the game, really not a whole lot. But again, any anything you can do to push your creep out faster 
is a pretty useful thing. As we now we do see the Devil of Death, but again, they'll shade in. They, will, they won't really get a whole lot done. They may be able to get in range of this drone, but they only only be able to get one shot in. That, well, not really going to make much of a difference here. And, of course, this is a Stargate opener here from Binding. I believe there is yeah, one Void Ray already on the way that killed an Overlord. Second one, well, it's on the way here, too. And the question is, how many Void Rays does Vanya stop at? Because there are several different builds. There's the one that's, oh, yeah, I'm going to drop a second Stargate. I'm just going to mass Void Rays. And it's going to work, even though I would never think it would. Because Queen Hydra is so powerful against Void Rays. Or there's the, I'm just going to get a couple, and this is going to keep me safe. And I think that's the version we're going to see here from Vanya. I think he's probably going to stop at two. He's maybe going to go to three. But doesn't that doesn't really it, it's not often that you even go through there there we go okay so no more void rays on the way for the moment now he can change his mind starcraft is a flexible game but now with the we see the third base on the way this is actually really interesting uh with with bonnier generally when you're looking at a circuit or when you're looking at products you say ah oh, it's a pvc what are they going for yeah there's the third second third void ray on the way so this is going to be a little bit more committed than we thought anyway Generally, when you see a Zerg, they're like, or when, when a Zerg scout to Protoss, I, I should say, and they're like, oh, yes, they have double gas by, they have double gas in the natural by three minutes, 45. Okay. They're expanding. I know they're going to expand sooner rather than later. That's what it tells me, but we see but Nia, Vanya, well, sorry, Nina instead. I can get players' names right tonight, apparently. Um, anyway, she says, you know what? Why don't I even just take my natural before my, stop moving, please, before my third base? Of course, what that means is I'm uh, just going to get that third or the, take my third base before my gas. And that just means that that third base is pretty fast. It's not the fastest possible. Why is this really annoying? Anyway, um, it's not the fastest possible. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but it is still a pretty god, uh, gosh darn fast, especially with the with the three void rays we have at fourth one on the way. And we're seeing the void ray immortal. This is a terrifying roach killing force but should should nina go for anything or should vanya go for anything else i don't like it nearly as much of course these forward rays they're doing a great job scouring the map making sure that there is nothing here that vanya really needs to be worried about i okay again i apologize for the observing hiccups um i don't know why screen my screen is jumping maybe yet I think the issue is with the actuation period, uh, period of my middle mouse. But, but anyway, the Voiders, they're going to go in once again. And they really shouldn't get... They may be able to get a gas or assassinate a queen, but... Yeah, okay, yeah, they'll get the gas. This is a rather easy takeoff for them. Really not going to deal with too much. Actually, maybe get this queen as well, but no. Not with the queens on the way. And the Voiders, there's force return. Uh, trying to see what they can get done here. No big deal, but of course, this is only... Well, actually, yeah, it's four Voiders on the map, but Nina's kind of stopped. Oh, hey, Ryan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I will do that after this game. Now we do have the army of Nina moving on in. And yeah, but this is a decently scary army. I mean, as I said, that, that's a lot of hydras, and this is uh, not a lot of slash here for our red Protoss. And yeah, sure, she can kill Queen. That's nice. She can kill some workers. And my force field's actually going to be able to shave off Raptor before anything hits. And it looks like with the force field here, Nina's actually going to maybe be able to sector through this. As soon as she gets rid of... Oh, wow, that's important. As soon as she gets rid of all of these hydras, she should be able to... The ground army is dead. Uh, that's it. The roaches are just going to evaporate here with this immortal with these amount of void rays. And I don't know if there are enough hydras here yet. Actually, uh, great job here. The the bile does hit the roaches. But this is a lot of zerglings and a lot of everything else. And this is a really a scary position for Nina to be in here. But we do have more adepts on the way. And adepts can kill zerglings rather fast. Adepts can kill hydras pretty good. Uh, on good here. But, you know, there, there are no blades. So this is just unupgraded adepts. We do have the warp prism going down as well. And it looks like Vanya has hell here. This attack from Nina, it was a scary one. Make no mistake about it, but not quite scary enough. Unfortunately for Vanya, he cannot chase. He does not have muscular augments for the Hydras ready. He just has some long shooty boys on the way. So Nina will survive. Nina does have her fourth base on the way behind this, but this was not a great fight for her in the slightest. Of course, you see that number. You see that the Zerg trading less income, trading less resources than the Protoss. 
that's never a good situation because that's really what you want to see always is once you deserve go. And sure, the Zerg like uh, what, you, what you see, if you want to be successful. Actually, even when games Zerg win. Thank you. Yeah, no, I just don't want to pull up the the settings menu in game because you know I don't want to miss something. Even as my observing has been relatively rough this evening, but it's fine. It's a okay. See, I, I specifically have that on for mirror matchups because, uh, well, I've been casting a lot of 2v2 recently and being able to see which <laughs> which Marines belong to which player makes life rather e easy. Yeah, Twitch is pretty dead today. I think it's because it's the BP debate. I'm pretty sure it's because of the vice, pres vice presidential debates going on, which, depending on how it goes, maybe the presidential debates. But anyway, now we do have the army of Vanya going on in on here with the punish. She says, Nina, you did not get enough done here. I think I'll take your third base in exchange. And there's just, okay, there is one, there is one disturbance shot. Gonna go in and actually miss in its entirety, which means the third base will. And the third base is dead. Vanya says, you know what? I don't want a third base. I want more. I want your heart. I want the very beating heart of the Protoss economy. Of the Protoss, hope in this game is out of the road to Hydra Force. It's steaming its way in just, just enough circulars to get this around. And the army of, well, the army of Nina, it's evaporating here. 168 supply to 99. This disruptor shot will be good, but not good enough as the army is now, as the fight is now on two fronts. Plus one attack will go down, will not complete. The third base of, of Nina has been raised. So there we have it. GG. Vanya taking game number one. And there we go. Fixing some settings for, for friends. Okay, yeah. So uh, anyway, right in the way, I have, the reason I have that is actually I've been casting a decent amount of 2v2s and there were some situations where I had a, a TTT uh, because I, I did some things for Sugar's uh, NA Apprentice 2v2 League and there were some specific situations where I had and we didn't have Gameheart turned on because it was causing a lobby bug and there's a little fruit fly in front of my face. Anyway, it's causing a lobby bug or causing the overlay bug from happening so we didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, trying to figure out whose Marines were, were whose without that made... Actually, no, Gameheart was on for that, actually, but it, still, trying to figure out whose games were whose, uh, whose Marines were whose without those, those uh, life bars made life a little bit annoying. That, and it's really nice for when you specifically to tell who is winning Ling Battles. But other than that, yeah, I agree. What, you don't like fluorescent red as the... As the you don't like red and blue and green and all these different colors as, uh, as HP bars. Oh yeah, it was, um, what I was learning, the main thing I learned about that, about the two, that two, from casting that 2v2 tournament is a, even though I have an i7 processor, it's not good enough to, it, it, it dies when 2v2 happens regardless. And B, the 2v2 community is so much more toxic than the 1v1 community. Uh, just from seeing the people I had in chat. Uh, seeing how they, people were talking about the games. It's, uh, it feels a lot more like a MOBA than it does StarCraft in terms of how the community interacts. Which is, uh, yeah. I mean, I got good viewership, but oof. That being said. Well, our players, they're loaded into game number two. It will be Pillars Gold. Pillars of Gold. I was right. Let's get into it. And here we are. Spawning in the upper right. In the red up one game to zero from B100 Gaming. It's Vanya. And his opponent in the blue. Down one game. One game from elimination from Team Exxon. It's Nina. I did that for you, Ryan. And is it just me, or does this green look too green? <laughs> this, this does not look like your standard HP bar that I'm used to seeing. Actually, one more thing. I forgot to turn that off. Just for you. Where is it? Uh, under gameplay. Yes. Their life bar is damaged. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm, I'm not used to seeing life bars like that. Here we go. We have that now GSL level production value. 
As, uh, yeah, Nina, she does get the scout off. She's, oh, hey, you have a natural. I know you're probably not going to kill me with something too early here, as uh, we're just waiting for Vanya to get up a couple more drones, drop that gas, do all those fun things. As well, Vanya, you know what? As I'm paying attention to everything else, Vanya says, you know what? Hex block time. Play the cosmic dance. Do, do a little, have a little sing, do a little bit, a little bit of dance. Because my home, your home is now mine. There is no natural that I will allow to you in this game number two. At least not for, not for quite a while. The question, of course, the question we must always ask ourselves is whether Vanya will be able to get the evil block on top of it. Some players go for it, some players don't. Actually, I think I saw Vanya do this recently. And I, we should take a moment to point out that, well, Nina's going for a cannon rush as well. And Vanya does have the drone pull. He has enough, and his cannons really should not get Oh, actually, yeah, okay, no, this pilot will get up. Anyway, so Vanya not necessarily paying attention to this as much. Yeah, no, she did build a port. I thought it was just to deal with this, but Vanya's got to cancel here. He's getting rid of the last second. And he gets a kill, which is massive here. Vanya not be, not getting any sort of money whatsoever. Nina with the gas, with the gas tank there, so she wiggled her drone out. And, of course, this is a late cannon rush, right? So this last cannon... I don't know if this cannon, this cannon should be able to hit the hatchery. Yes, it can. Okay. So now we're in a fun situation where this cannon absolutely will be able to take this hatch down by itself. But Vanya has time. Vanya does not have money, though. Yeah, uh, missing the cancel. Yeah, missing the cancel on the cannon is a whole lot less damaging than missing the cancel on the hatch. I gotta say. But anyway, so now we have, well... Zergling flooding onto the other side of the map. Vanya doing what he can. As he has one spine, but one spine does not a defense make. You need, what is it? I think it's about three spines to make this bust. One spine will not kill the cannon before the cannon kills the spine as it's trying to root. So that is absolutely something that Vanya is going to try, but he just doesn't, have, just doesn't have the money for it. Meanwhile, it's cannon on the way. That's a pylon, not a cannon. Would have expected, well, I would have expected you to drop a cannon here. And it looks like actually Vanya's going to be able to get in. This probe needs to put a block down. There we go. Okay, there's the gate. And uh, now this cannon is doing what it can. But the, of course, Vanya, Nina not exactly microing this. Means the spine will go down without too much issue. Which means the, well, this cannon is dead. And Nina really not getting much out of this cannon rush in the slightest. Yeah. Spine does win that. Um, but not if you do that. That, uh, and the spine's now out of range. And Vanya absolutely flubbed that one. Unfortunately. Yeah, that, that was a bit of a throw. That spine absolutely would, would have won, but no longer. But Vanya says, you know what? I'm just selling out. It is Ling Flood time. As, well, Nina behind this, she's going double Stargate, and she absolutely needs to be careful. Banelings on the way. Banelings on the way indeed. And there are no sen no sentries as of yet. The bus is incoming, but only one more one Baneling left. And there is a force. Okay, now they're going to get in. That last Baneling explosion doing wonders here as well. Nina keeps trying to rewall, but that's not going to be enough. And with the lack of a, with the lack of a gateway, certainly not going to run into the main. And there we have GG Vanya. He's going to move on to the finals to play special. That was a game. That was a game? Question mark? I think that was a game. I'm rather confused. Unfortunately, well, Vanya forgot to cancel. Nina forgot to cancel. Nina didn't get enough, didn't get enough cannons up. Nina didn't have a cannon down at her wall, and I think you kind of want that. She went in immediately into double double spire. Meanwhile, she knew that Vanya was losing his his base, so you kind of got to know that something's coming up there. And I mean, I think she saw the she saw the decent amount of zerglings that were brought over to draw the aggro. That's unfortunate. And uh, of course, we do have a resident cannon rusher cannon rusher here. His name is Talden. and he knows everything there is to know about cannon rushes. So if anyone's going to be triggered, he is also. Question for you. How does my audio sound? I have did a bunch of work tweaking my audio settings over the weekend. Um, actually, tra tweaking my system audio settings. I ran a... Got some things set up so I could have uh, equalizer and compressor and all that running throughout uh, my entire system. Most excellent. And it's not too loud. Uh, audio audio levels are fine. I'm seeing I'm, I'm breaking into the red side of things just a little. And that's maybe not the best. Okay. Yeah, I spent a decent amount of time on that this weekend. And <laughs> then, of course, I was in a Zoom call because I'm a PhD student. I have class. And I was in a Zoom call and 
I had to add some something. My audio driver just got absolutely screwed up, screwed up, regardless of the of the filters, uh, the the post processing, and I just started sounding like a a robot from a down from a long hallway. And I'm trying to answer questions and ask questions to my professor, and it's just not working. I have to re- reboot my entire computer, and luckily I have an SSD, so I'm able to get back into lecture. But haven't had an issue since, so I guess we're happy. I guess it's a good time. And uh, hey, we have a lobby here. It's gonna be Vanya. It's gonna be special. For our grand finals. No winter for this evening. Anything I'm missing over here? I don't think so. And uh, so, unfortunately, we do not have winter. Uh, um, we don't have winter. Will not be casting this final. He's otherwise engaged. So it's just steadfast or me uh, here to take you on through the way home. Now, steadfast, of course, he is the other caster. He actually was recently brought on to Exxon as well. He does not have his jersey yet. He should probably get that in about a month, which is exciting. Um. I know, right? But uh, generally, winter comes. It's not tonight. Maybe tomorrow, or maybe uh, maybe next week. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. Our players are loaded into game number one. All right, here we are spawning in the upper left. He's the blue Terran for Mexico. He's Juanito. He's special. How did I say that? And his opponent in the red from Russia with love, it's Vanya. I did not set that. Shame on me. Shame on that production value. You should expect more from your casters here. But anyway, we do have the romance side. It's an interesting map. The, and I haven't seen a whole lot of it yet. Again, this is brand new to the map. What, the, the map pulls a week and a half old. I actually have not had nearly as much time as I would have liked to play the game, to learn these maps, to do all that, because a PhD is a thing. I've been casting a lot. I'm kind of running back a production for the King of Battles tournament tomorrow morning and on Tuesday. So I've just been super busy. I've not gotten a chance to play games, but when we talk about Romanticide, the most, I think the most interesting feature here is this mineral, this set of minerals right here, because this is a terrifying tank push position from our Terran player. So we generally, we see Zergs, they take the space as their third base, because you really don't want to take this linear third. That is asking to be dropped all over the place. You're expanding towards the Terran player. It's not a good time. But anyway, so we, there, there's a reason we do see, they do take this, but pretty much ASAP, they do see, you start seeing drones mine out this wall to make sure that the tanks can't get there. And it is one, two, three, four, five, six. What? So what, 12 total drone trips? I believe, I believe each of these are 10, somewhere between 12 and 16 drone trips. Uh, because each of these, of course, is two, is worth two drones worth of income. Two drone trips worth of income. So you do see that. That is absolutely something that has to be dealt with, which means the force of the Zerg to be a little less efficient than they mine uh, from their third base just a little, which maybe, I, I don't really know how much of a difference that's, that is going to make in the long scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, in the win rates on this map. But it is something to look out for. As now we do have the Reaper moving its way across the map, doing what it can. And Vanya, interestingly enough, not really falling for the... Oh, for, the, for the European style of scouting for proxies, as we've started to see, and I think Vanya's been actually been a perpetrator of this fairly significantly, where Vanya, where Vanya goes and, okay, first of all, goes across the map. Actually, man, this group of great micros, especially here, playing on the edge of things, too healthier. Special, knowing exactly what he can and what he cannot pull off. But anyway, as I was saying, Vanya would send, would send his first overlord on the other side of the map, and that he would just drone scout the, the proxy locations with the uh, with the other with the other dro with with the drone to make sure that there are, were no Urax proxies coming in. And you know, as I say that, as we, we talk about proxy lack of proxies, all those fun things. It looks like Vanya is going for some two base media here. See three three back in gas. No, uh, well, no third base as of yet. Actually, Queen's doing a good job on being able to prevent the Reaper from going in. 
and the Reaper will not die, but will be shoot off and is low, is on low enough health that Vanya should be able to get the third that he is posturing for. But of course, it, we did see that high, height up, highlight up for a second. Looked like that was going for, but actually that's not going to be the case at all. And this, as we find out, that this map is pretty good for some Nidus play. Now, a special, he is aware of things. We see this patrol here, this this scary spot off to the side. Uh, well, the Marines will find any sort of Nidus that goes in because this is, of course, going to be a Nidus play here coming from our red Protoss player. We do only see two gas, not well, we only see three gas, not four. The Roach one is on the way. So we're going to see some por some form of heavy aggression coming in from Banya. And as the lair is just about done, I do expect, I do expect this to be a Nidus play. And that's a Nidus play that will not be able to get on into the main. And so actually, this Overlord is going to go down as well. So Banya, he's going to have to go somewhere else. We do have the Zerglings on the map. Means that uh, we, we will be able to see the Trop outside of the, outside of the natural, but Man, Nida, Nida are so much scarier when they find their way into the main base. That being said, especially if he's only on a 1 1 1 at the moment. We do see two barracks going down here. Stim is closer to being, is closer to not being not done than done. We have no tanks on the map, and there is no wall as well. So, special, he's going for a big attack, right? He's, he's getting set up here to be greedy, to be able to hit with a nice timing once Stim is done. But can he hold what's going to come before Stim happens? Because, of course. The, now, the worm is almost done. The worm is almost ready. Run from it, fear from it. It's not as scary as a sandworm. We saw in that awesome Dune trailer the, uh, a couple weeks ago, but... Well, it's not terrible. And actually, so Vanya's gonna show up here in, in Vision of Special. SCB Special does see this. Gonna pull everything he can. SCVs are gonna get pulled as well. And yeah, the Snidus should not complete. Special, okay, looks like he's thinking about landing that third, but will not do so yet. So yeah, actually the Snidus will complete. And the Queens are out first. They can choose to use. Just barely, we do have more and more coming out here. Out now with the SC full, it's hard for anything to get out, but that doesn't matter. As the Queens are out, the Roaches are out, the SCVs must run. Especially, he's running back into his main base, doing what he can to clog the ramp to, to really kill off everything. Actually, one Queen will get targeted down rather quickly. And Vanya not really on top of things with the transfuse quite yet. Actually, he's choosing to transfuse his Overseer over the back, over, over his Queens, over his Roaches. I don't, I don't really know how I, how I feel about that. But Special is taking terrible damage. 25 horses going down here. Unfortunately, though, the army of war, unfortunately for Special, the army of Vanya here is shrinking. It is going down, but Vanya owns the natural. Vanya owns the natural, and Special cannot go down it. Okay, so Stim is done. That is something, but uh, we really have nothing to kill Virgins. Not really. It's more and more Zergens to go uh, on the way here. And I. Okay, so Vanya's gonna lose the place. He's going to lose a whole lot more than that. I, I wonder if Special Army just not quite enough. Do what he can to stem on top of and he's actually going to get closer as closer and closer to getting some life blocks. And uh, what we have going, what we have going to Special here, right? He's lost the gas in the natural, but really Terrans don't spend their gas all that much anyways. On this case, he's a little bit gas guard. He has three command centers. That is absolutely something that he can make use of. As honestly, this army for Fania is not all, all that inspiring. But of course, now we have the second, we have the second knight is going on the way, and Special can only, really only deal with things at once. So you're going to be able to target this one down, and he's going to have to pick up, sprint up on into the, into the main base, deal with the Link, deal with the Roaches, deal with the, the Queens that are going to pop out of here, and cost him so much more trouble. And actually, uh, we're going to see some Raptors below. These Raptors should die. And yeah, the Queens and the Roaches, they will be forced back. The question is whether Vanya did enough. The Special now has an army that is to be feared. Special on 27 workers to the 34 of Vanya. He has three bases. Although he needs to repair this command center as it is ever so slowly burning down. But yeah, there we go. There is a SCB doing Raiders work. Doing the Terran Dominion's work here. Making sure that nothing dies. That everything survives. The Special will have a three base economy. Well, fall back on here. We do have another night is going up. This one, not all that, not all that, not... As scary. The roaches do have speed now. That's a decent amount of them. But uh, of course, these are marines. They have. They don't have any upgrades, but they do have stim and they do have combat skills. But this is a lot of roaches and a decent. Well, only two things. But it's not zero. They can start parking the medevac down. And especially, he's pretty confident that he's the army to deal with this. And I'm not sure he does here. As the roaches now come pouring in, the army of special dies, and the third base is now forfeit. Once again, we do have roaches moving on into the main base. A second knight is going to be dropped, and we have raptors now on the way. And a special back effectively on one base economy. He's going to do what he can to stim on top of these Raptor cocoons before anything pops, but that is not going to be enough. Doing what he can to get this Nidus down. The Nidus will go down here before anything's able to come out. And special is actually able to take a positive engagement as nine, ten more SCVs go down. Special down ten workers, but 
Once the meals drop, he's gonna be up in economy. Once again, these Ravagers, these Roaches, they will find themselves marooned, bereft of their family and friends. Actually, this is a fight that the Roaches are not going to be able to win here. Not with a rally coming from Special. And Vanya feels like he's just, his, his army is just timing out just a little. The Roaches, they're not even gonna go back into the Nidus. Interestingly enough, so looks like he's actually the Vanya C tech face. Says, ah, Special, kill the Nidus, don't kill him. Don't kill my Roaches. Maybe I can make the fight here as more and more Roaches pile on in, especially he's forced to retreat once again. But Vanya, he's only sitting up uh, effectively four Roaches ahead in army supply. That is not a lot. Not, no, not with the tanks here, not with plus one un for the Marines. Not with Vanya sitting here on 34 workers and only building Roaches. He's not in a great spot. Now we do have a drop coming in here from Specialist. Vanya says, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna be ill. I don't I cannot snowball anymore. I gotta build some, I gotta build some drones, but this is the issue with a type of a, with an attack like this. Right, you can go and you say, ah, I need to build some drones. Right? I but if you wait too late, like Vanya I believe has. Well, you run into this issue where you're droning up, you're trying to build some tech, you're trying to maybe get some upgrades. And special well he's been doing that the entire time. He's sitting here on Pretty similar work accounts to the Zerg, to be totally honest. And sure, he doesn't have his third base yet, although he, that is going to change sooner rather than later. Sure, he doesn't have his third base yet. But he has one, he has plus one attack, plus one armor just about done. He has combat shields, he has stim, he has tanks being built. More barracks on the way as well, and this is just a terrifying, terrifying army from special. As Roaches Ravagers, Ravagers are three supply, Roaches are two. They are not supply efficient in the slightest. They're great because you can build a lot of them and you can build a lot of them early. That is the benefit you see. You see no benefit from equal army supplies. You see no benefit when you're down on upgrades. And there just comes a point, even when you're ahead on upgrades, or when you're uh, ahead on up, when you're ahead on army supply, where it doesn't really matter. And I believe we've hit that point for special here. There is enough healing, there are enough tanks. Especially going to be able to take advantage of this position that I was talking about. Actually, as we, we noticed that Vanya, well, he has found the situation where he has he's been too busy attacking to really bother with defending. And now we do have a. This is the majority of Vanya's army here. On its way on into the natural, especially. I'm sure there are tanks on the ramp, but that's not going to be enough. SCVs pulled from every base. And all of them have to do is hold on. He's, he's killed the third of Vanya. He's going to be able to sit mine in the natural in a second, and it looks like he's going to be able to hold here. The one Marauder is doing so much work. Special does stick in the miles, and that is unfortunate. 18 workers going down. And Special's economy is in the dumpster, but that doesn't really matter. As the Nidus goes down with his special, he's taking game number one. And there you have it. Special with a 1-0 lead in this best of seven already. All right, so game number two, the lobby is ready. We'll be on Jagannatha. And what have I seen? I, th I think the one ZVT I've seen Vanya play on this map. It was two base Mita.
All right, the players are loaded in. It is game number two. Let's get into it. Let's introduce our players, shall we? And here we are in the bottom left. In the blue for Team Exxon. The Terran for Mexico. He's special. And his opponent from B100 Esports in the red. It's Vanya. All right. So the question here is what are we get what are we gonna see happen in this Partido Numero Dos? Special, of course, going for I believe this is his three barracks reaper build that he does, and I'm surprised he's doing it on this map as this is one of the longer rush distances, but I guess if you take into account these these acceleration jo the zones, it's going to be enough. So he, so what happens here? I believe he normally gets a three racks, third racks. This. Anyway, he walls off his natural with two barracks in this case, I guess. And he just starts producing reapers. Moves across the map. And behind that, he gets into what it, whatever he wants. It serves as a wall from counterattacks and it's it's not quite a proxy, but I mean, you're, you're a little bit closer. So you do get that slightly faster rush distance. And on... Actually, no, he did this on... He really liked doing this on Eternal Empire. And I guess this is a relatively similar map. So maybe it's only going to be two barracks this time. Again, I do generally think I see a third barracks go up. So maybe special has changed. Maybe the, the strat has changed. I'm not really sure. But now we do have a couple of Reapers moving their way across the map here. And Vanya just going for something normal, something standard. So the first Reaper will move its way across the map. And this is not going to tell Vanya anything's crazy. And actually, Vanya, with his Overlord position, he will not know that there's a second barracks in the wall for quite a while. So the Reaper, well, Zerglings are out. Reaper's not a big deal. But the big deal, of course, is the second Reaper that's coming in here. Two Reapers, they do a whole lot more than one. And with two by with them coming out two by two, this is absolutely something that Vanya has to be afraid of. As we do notice, in special, he's being a little bit more aggressive with these Reapers than you normally would be. As he's doing what he can to shave off Zerglings, shave off uh, any sort of damage that he can get done to make sure that he's able to get damage with the subsequent Reapers. Now, we do have three Reapers in here, and this that doesn't mean this Queen should die. Actually, really nice here. No, notice the grenades are going to buy him time to be able to take that Queen out before he goes back up and forth. He's going to be forced to heal once again. But the three Reapers, I mean, they do significant damage. Vanya, not targeting things down, he will be able to get one Reaper, and that is rather unfortunate. Special wants to be able to snowball with this Reaper count, but behind this, he has a second Command Center on the way. He has a factory on the way. All of these things are good and powerful and useful. And now we do have Special once again running in. And uh, he's doing what he can to get this Queen. But speed is three quarters of the way down. Okay, this Queen's going to go down now. And now we're at the point where it's a little bit scared because Vanya does not have many Zerglings in this life. Now he does. But this is a... He has been forced to massively overbuild Zerglings. Massively overbuild Queens. And the other big thing is, well... This is a... There's a massive separation between the net. That pretty significant se separation here between the natural and the third base from a creep perspective, right? You want to be able to, to join those up together for any sort of follow-up. Want to make sure that happens. With the queens going down, with this massive reaper pressure that has that we've seen from special here. What you see is the fact that this creep from Bonnie is only just now starting. Only on two, only on two queens. Sure, we have more on the way, but that's only two queens. Isn't it? Now he's going to try to do what he can with the lings that, the lings that he has built to defend. But uh, special's got a wall, and these two barracks say no, no, no. Actually, so actually, this is going to be really cool. So special behind this, he says, you know what? I think I've done enough damage to you. I've killed a couple queens. I've killed a decent amount of zerglings. I maybe four zerglings, two queens. I mean, it's expensive, not the end of the world. Special did commit for this. He says, you know, what? I think I've messed with the tempo of this game. I think that's the biggest thing. So behind this, what am I going to do? Well, Hellions are good, but Hellbats are better. And I'm going to hit you with this fairly significant Marine Hellbat Reaper attack that we see moving, <laughs> getting ready to move across the map here. It is not standard. It is rather weird. It's rather cool. Actually, so we, it is unfortunate the special spawn on this side of the map because the, the Zerglings will be able to 
start chewing away at this tech lab at this reactor, but that's not a story of this game. The question is whether Botany can hold right now. Because we will see uh, how bad's the Wow, yeah, there we go. How bad's on the way? Lots of reapers, lots of marines, lots of one queen's gonna be assassinated already. And of course the key to holding this is getting is having enough queens out, getting them where they need to be. So now the Reapers, the Halbats, they're getting on top of all the queens. These queens are just dying. This build special, I believe, has hit critical mass. As the Reapers show they're in the front, but the Reapers, they can heal twice over. And now there are roaches, they're finding their way out of the map, but the question is whether there is enough and whether they are fast enough. I do not believe they are to be a what do we have? Roaches coming from every side. Roaches dying as they spawn. And what it, what has special loss? He's lost two Reapers. Actually, he's lost 11. I'm sorry. It looks like the run by was successful. I'm sitting here and I just assumed the wall. We have the wall was not up. And actually, that was an excellent run by here from Vanya. 11 workers go down. And maybe this, this story that I've been telling about how Vanya is dead is less of a story after all. That being said, though, this Roach counterattack should not be able to get a whole lot done here. Now we have a bunch of... Special dude is such a good job just killing off all these queens. But anyway, uh, we do have now a base number. So the Roach counterattack. Well, it really shouldn't get a whole lot done here. And where do we stand? Special down 10 workers. Even on our even on army supply. These roaches will not be impactful. And actually, sorry, sorry, I apparently am just doing a terrible job of observing today. 16 workers go down. And yeah, now special absolutely the driver's driver's seat here as these four Hellions. Making their way in, doing what they can. This, this Banshee, well, the Banshee's doing a great job too. Sure, there are fours. That makes the cloak not all that useful, but when you catch workers on the transfer, well, you catch workers on the transfer, and that's actually some catastrophic damage here. Banshees have killed two. Reaper and Hellions have killed a whole lot more, even if the Hellions are now dying. And we do see these roaches, uh, some potential raptors doing what they can to try to make it but there's defensive Banshee. And Vanya, well, Vanya is in dire straits here, sitting on. 46 workers compared to his Terran. Pretty much at equal worker supply to his Terran opponent. Stim is just about done. We have three barracks, at, three Marines coming at a time here. And if I'm Banya, I am terrified of the of the tank follow-up. And Special knows that he's in the driver's seat too. We do see a couple more barracks on the way. For a grand total of five, this is going to be five barracks pressure. A potentially up to eight racks. I wouldn't be surprised to see it. And Banya, well, okay. Lair is only just now going to complete. And what is Vanya going to go into here? So we're past. I don't think we're just going to go pure road traffic. I don't. I think he's taking too much damage. Banshee just sitting here getting it so much. You do not see Banshees in this day and age of pro Starcraft getting the amount of damage that that this Banshee is getting is taken out. But you know what? Va special. Well, these these Banshees are special as well. Another. He's even going to get out six kills. Forced to spore. Spore was stopped. Drone died, or some swarms canceled. Drone died, anyways. And yeah, we're just gonna see some massive. We're just gonna see roaches here, and that I, I guess that's finding his best shot to try to go across the map, maybe hit with something before anything too catastrophic. Can this tank get out? Okay, yeah, I can. It's just kind of sitting there on the on the. Map. But Bonnie says, you know what? Yeah, I, I know the situation I'm in. GG. Special. We're now one way from one game away from. Champion from being the champion from winning this tournament clean sweeping. And I don't believe he dropped a single map Not a bad situation to be in at all Of course the winner does make what is it? $30 plus whatever match he knows and that being said of course there is a oh wow. We're already at 88 bucks That is rather nice Anyway, so if you like what if you like the tournament that's happening, if you like the players, you say, hey, Exxon's a pretty cool organization. Hey, I really like special. Hey, I like uh, Vanya, whatever the case may be. There is a Macharino code in the chat. If you have not used it already, you should make sure you do. It is absolutely free. Uh, user code Exxon13 adds a dollar to the prize pool. Just like that. You got you to sign in, of course. You, but you can sign in with your, your Battle.net account. You can sign in with your Google account, whatever the case may be. So not all that difficult. Make a burner email. Do it twice. You didn't hear that from me, though, because uh, that I believe that probably breaks TOS, and we want Mantrian to keep sponsoring, so don't do that. Whatever you do, don't make a second account. Don't do that. Game number three will be on Death Aura Special with that 2-0 lead.
And I'm excited to see what comes out of this map, this next map. Especially he's hit with some special ta he's defended some special tactics. He is hit with some special tactics. And now we have game number three. I don't really know what we're gonna see, but uh it's gonna be cool regardless. That being said, players are now loaded in. Game number three, Death Aura. Let's get into it. Here we are spawning the bottom right in the blue for Team Axon. It's special. And his opponent from Russia, from B100 Esports, it's Vanya. So what are we going to see here? Special? I don't think he's... Oh, well, as I say, hey, what's special going to do? Well, he's going to do this. We do see this should be proxy four racks coming in here from special. So the math, of course, goes if you send two SCVs, it could be either two racks or three racks, depending. If you send three SCVs, it's almost guaranteed to be a four racks because two SCVs is what you do, build to build a three racks here. And interestingly, interestingly enough, we do see special. He has uh, he's going to build some on the high ground, too. Body will see this, and with enough time to pull drones, should he choose to do so. And there we do. We see we do see a couple more drones getting pulled. This first, well, this first barracks will be able to complete, I believe. Actually, Vanya has some terrible luck here with the RNG of these SCVs. Just trying to attack everywhere where the SCVs are not. First barracks is going to complete. Second one, this one on the high ground should as well. And actually, okay, that's unfortunate. So one SCV will go down. And Vanya will now know that this is not just a 2x, this is more than that, which is, of course, what something that Special was trying to avoid. So one barracks will go down, and Special just doing what he can to make sure the SCVs don't die. So we're going to play Ring Around the Rosie, pockets full of Posey. But uh, no plague here, just Zerg. And now with the Marine here, the the, the drones will be forced to go home. Actually, we gotta, they're going to be able to get that. So only one SCV left, which means we're not going to see bunkers here, but this is, in fact, a proxy 3 barracks. All right, so you don't really care about bunkers nearly as much as on a, in a two racks. And now we just see a bunch of Zerglings on the way. And there are two things that this may actually, as I say, yeah, there is a bunker coming down. Um, there are two, two, two ways that this, that this works, right? The one is, okay, I get a bunker up, I, I get the container, it's nice. The other one, you just get enough, Zerg, you just get enough Marines that you kind of, you, pu you punch through and you just have enough and you just kind of kill the Zerg. That being said, the delay that has been on this actually really nice. Um, I, I should say this is really nice for special in that, well, the bunker, nothing's been targeting the bunker. Well, now the SCVs is doing a great job of buffering for these Marines. And it looks like the second bunker should maybe go up, but uh, now with the spine here, it's a little bit scary. And the Marines that are now that are now here are really not enough to do significant damage yet. The second bunker will not go down. The Marines now retreating on into this bunker. And uh, doing what they can to... Spine is going to take some damage. But this is a lot of Zerglings, and this is a... The, the Spine Crawler now is in the range of this bunker, yeah. So there's, of course, a range where the, the, the bunker can... The, the Spines can hit the bunker, but the bunkers cannot hit the Spines. And uh, this is... This is a whole for a while now. And yeah, Vanya has absolutely held this special doing what he can. I mean, he's still building three Marines at a time. But uh, this is an uninspiring force, to be sure. And I think we're going to move on to game number four sooner rather than later. And that's entirely appropriate here. Special, it's a three racks. Proxy three barracks. Well, it has to get something. It's not a two racks where you can just give me. You can you cannot kill the base and you'll be fine. No, this absolutely has to kill the Zerg, or at least do tremendous, tremendous damage. You're just forcing Zerglings, well, that's not gonna do it. Especially now that Bainley's on the field. These Marines are not gonna get anything done. Now, Special's gonna do what he can, but these are Bainley. Here we have a GG Vanya taking the game back. And we move on. Game number four on the way. Special, try to get that cheap, quick 3-0 victory. Was not able to do so. There we go. I think I like that lighting just a little bit better with the three full three lights on. Yeah, I think that's just a little, little bit better. There's that hot spot. What can you do? All right, map number four will be Pillars of Gold. Pilares de Oro, as it is in Spanish.
And we have the countdown, perhaps the last countdown of the night. Although, of course, these Exxon Cups, they do have a dirty habit of going on, of either being whitewash, 3-0, clean sweep, or going to game number five. And there's really not a lot in between. So we've hit that map number four, which means there's a hope. There's a hope we're going to go to map number five. But to do that, well, our players have to be ready. They have to be in the game. They have to be. They have to have some fun things up their sleeves. And all of these things are true. Well, it's game number four. Pillars of gold. Let's do it. And here we are spawning in the upper right, in the blue, up two games to one on match point, on tournament point on this Exxon Cup number thirteen. It's special. And his opponent in the bottom left, in the red, trying to take us to trying to take us to full all the way to game number five. Reverse sweep this thing. It's Vanya. Not before this game gets too much into things. Massive shout out, of course, goes to Steadfast. He's the other caster uh, commentating this tournament. Just recently signed by Exxon as well. So go give him some love. Open up the multi Twitch. Do whatever you want to do. But uh, also shout out to the fact that I will be co-casting for the duration uh, with Steadfast on Saturday afternoons on the the Corporate Esports Association on their channel, both collegiate and uh, corporate. Not professional because these players, they're, they're professionals in life, but maybe not professionals in StarCraft. We got some good games. It's a good time. CA underscore SC2. And of course, well, Steadfast, he's a good guy. So all of these things are, well, they're, 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 they're pretty, they are pretty cool. Cool. Got some cool things in the works. Can I say cool enough times? That's a good question. And we see no special tactics coming from special in this game. Number one, nothing for Vanya either. We don't see any sort of 19 drone approach laying all in that... Honestly, though, it's Vanya. That would not surprise me. <laughs> in the slides, that is absolutely sounds like a Vanya build. But anyways... We're not going to see that. Not this game. So this is going to go in. Going to see what it can. Now, this Reaper is hoping to be as successful as its, well, as the, as its brethren in the game on Gigantha, and absolutely it will be able to do so. One drone kill for, for the amount of damage that will heal back up anyways, because, well, Reapers love drugs, and drugs are good things. Combat drugs. Anyway. Uh, anyway. I didn't say that. Uh, we The Reaper we able to get a drone here is actually massive. Now, we'll be able to deal with the creep in response if it did take too much damage for that, but again... One drone? Well, that's it's worth more than one drone because you gotta replace it. And then you're missing out the mining time of it. And all your subsequent drones are a little bit later. So, on the calculus, the earlier you kill workers, well, the better it is. For what? One, killing one drone now is worth killing probably three or four workers in three, four minutes from now? Something like that. But yeah, it looks like... Okay, special does have to be careful there. Uh, actually gonna go dive on top of this creep drone. We'll be able to kill it off, but of course there's a second one there. And he will lose the Reaper in exchange. I don't know, the Reaper, the Reaper started is worth, but now Vanya doesn't really have any vision on the map. And, or, Special does not have any vision on the map. And I, well, I don't think that's what Vanya's going to do this game, but I would not have been surprised, especially if the Reaper died earlier, to see a Roach Warren get thrown down and say, hey, look, you have no map vision. Good luck. Of course, Vanya's sitting here on 32 workers, going up to three. Actually, I think this is the first time he's gone up to three bases in this game, or uh, in this series. Or gone up to three bases with any actual looking like he's going through. Not using just three bases as a macro hatch. Well, we're going on into the, into the mid game. A special, not really interested in that at the moment. Says, you know what? Well, fusion cores are a thing. Battle cruisers are a thing. And those all make me very happy. And I think, do we have any gas on the natural? We don't yet. So this may yet still yet, this may yet be bio. But seeing how this barracks is loading, we're going to see some gas on the naturals rather soon. I believe this will be mech. Yeah, we do have the barracks now floating over. We're gonna do what it can to take this overlord out. And telling us they're gonna do what they can, they will not be able to get in though. And the creep tumor and the creep has connected between the, nat the natural and the third. So that is good. That's something that Vanya did not have the privilege of in game number two. 
We still, you know, is this going to be just delayed bio? I mean, I wouldn't think it. I mean, look, it's five minutes into the game, but we especially still only at two gas and five minutes into this game. There you go. We have third, third command center on the way. Huh. I am really interested to see what special is going to do here. So we do have the Hellions. They are moving in, and there's not a whole lot here, but there is enough. And so they're going to exist in just enough numbers that the Queens and the Roach will be able to chew them off. And, well, those are Hellions that are now dead. Now, the first battle cruiser is dead. It's going to just, it's just about done. We do have Yamato Cannon on the way. More Hellions on the way, so there we have it. Okay. Special with, I, I guess this is a PC battle cruiser mech, so when you battle cruiser Hellion, maybe you don't need those extra gases. Anyway, Hellion's moving in once again, and still eight of them because Hellion is special has been producing this non-stop. And Pillars of Gold is just, it's oddly enough, it is a, I mean, look, this base pretty wide open. This base potentially wide open. But despite that, well, it's a pretty good mech map. And the bounce will teleport on in to the main base here of uh, New Can get seven workers, seven workers is absolutely more than you expect to get here. Or many sort of battle cruisers, yeah. Especially at this point in the game, this point in the, in that, in the meta. And now, of course, we do have the Hellions, they're moving on into the natural. And there's not a whole lot here to defend. Stop. There's not a whole lot here to defend. We can target down more and more and more workers, and that work is going down. And that, that last volley that they need to do so, so much. Cruiser with eight kills, and I think the Hellions only got two. But that, that actually great, great defense from Vanya there on those Hellions. But of course, more and more Hellions on the way. And there comes a point where I'm not a big fan of special, just kind of shoving, throwing these units away, trying to get worker damage. Show the battle cruiser. Battle cruiser is, in fact, the most excellent job. Mobile can this fourth base, which is rather nice. Uh, finding not even able to get the replacement. But there comes a point where throwing away your Hellions against Roaches and Queens. Maybe not the best thing, as we do see Vanya, well, I guess the Hellions are just going to run in, run by once again, and the drone's going to go down, but that's kind of expected. Uh, the question is, what are the Hellions going to be able to do on in the space? Now, we do have Roaches here, they're going to be able to get on top of things, and I don't think we're going to see too many drone here. Yeah, two is going to be able to get two workers, maybe get a couple more. Oh yeah, two, two more workers for four Hellions, for what was that, six Hellions? Again, not all that worth it. So now we do have Aspire done. Bonnie is on six total gas. He does not have a fourth base quite yet. And he is going to be supply blocked rather soon. And so what I'd like, what I would like to see here, and what I think Bonnie's gonna go for, is the special got a good damage early. Don't get me wrong, he got good damage early. However, he's been throwing a lot of resources away for not a lot of gain. And that makes him decently vulnerable to just kind of a Roach, Ravager, Corrupter uh, uh, attack here from, from Banya onto his third base. Now we do have the battle troops, they are moving out, and this time they will be able to teleport home. So with the 12, they will have to be. 12 corruptors on the way with the four teams. Potentially 10 corruptors as uh, well. The amount of new kill corruptors like that. And the battle troops are safely get on top of these troops without too much effort. Three will go down there, just not enough to deal with it. And because they chose to not spend their spend their Yamato on the Queen, so that means two corruptors do die in exchange. And now with three battle cruisers out, another one on the way. So special really committing this rather hard. Oh, that is something to be feared. But Vanya, I do expect him to open up the taps on the army rather soon. Actually, right now, we do see eleven more roaches on the way. A couple more corruptors as he's overbuilt them to make sure. He's overbuilt his corruptors to make sure that he's just able to own the skies, then maybe snap face afterwards. These corruptors already, they will not be able to kill Battle Cruiser, Battle Cruiser just barely surviving, sitting here on 53 HP out of 500, so 10% health. And now we do have the corruptors that will be able to take out this, this barracks, of course, which means, well, no more, no more factories for the time being, but special, I think he has what he needs. Sorry, my, what is with my observing? I, I'm... I'm moving my mouse before I'm clicking down my mouse button, that's what it is. Oh, okay, this is actually really cool. So, the Corruptors, they're not going to go try to target, take down the main CC or something like that, like you see Rogue do. It's no, it's, I want to open my attack path. And that is an attack path indeed, but man, Special is walled off from anything. And I really would have preferred to see those, those uh, Corruptors now move on into the main base. The Corruptors are going to die on top of everything, but this is absolutely not a, 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 an attack avenue that Vanya wants. These vials though are going to be really nice, not going not to be able to get the tank quite yet, and Vanya's really not in the position he wants to deal with, and he really cannot get on top of things. This wall is terrifying, and I would really like to see Vanya go sweep around to the other side and attack from that angle, but that's not something he's going to do. He just says, you know what? I have Ravagers. Your wall is eventually going to go down, and you can see the Biles target anything and everything. 
that Vanya behind this only sitting at about a 40 army supply lead, which against Mac is not all that much at all. We do see more Hellions, more tanks on the way here. And this is getting more and more difficult for Special to breach, or for Vanya to breach. And we do Vanya's are ground army on the right hand side, air army on the left, but uh, he's gonna be forced to return. As uh, well, we do have the corruptors, they do have to be able to defend the road traffic, otherwise, the corruptors or the wow, the battle is just gonna be able to kill everything. And Vanya, he's decently all in here. He's only just now starting to drone up once again, but he was sitting on about 66 workers for quite a while. And Special has been allowed to take his fourth base. And I think this is the point where maybe Vanya can hope to break. As you absolutely do not want this Terran player to get a fourth win. When you let a fourth, uh, when a mech player get a fourth base, that is when things do not get fun. That's when things get pretty sad for the circular. So now we do have Jurglings, we do have Road Traveler moving their way in. And there is, of course, no blue flame quite yet. The tanks are on seat, and they're all clumped up. These files could be tremendous here for Vanya if he lands them. And there we go, tanks just going down. But uh, he was a little late on it. Just a little late. So Vanya losing a significant portion of his army. Where are the corruptors? Corruptors on the right-hand side. Looks like they want to go get a base snipe off on top of this here. The 20 workers did go down as a result of that. So not terrible. Not amazing for Vanya either. And, of course, the secret sauce is whether Vanya is able. Okay, so we have teleports on here. We can do for all three of these battle groups. Anyway, the secret sauce, of course, for Vanya is making sure special stays below that 150 supply mark. That is so terrifying for uh, when dealing with uh, for Zerg's dealing with mech. And special wealth, he's getting there. He's getting there sooner rather than later. Vanya has not been able to max out once again. Only just now getting up to getting above 80 workers. It's time to do the battle cruiser. Moving on the right hand side, but Vanya's aware of this. And well, so is special as this one lone Hellion is going to just kind of scatter around, see see what he can find, see what, where the expansions are. And now we have a. Pretty significant Hellion run by moving on and moving back. He said, well, it's on creep, and Special knows what that means. We do not have blue. It's really interesting. Special's not gotten blue flame this, uh, blue flame this game. And generally, it's kind of a it's cheap enough upgrade that you get it. But, of course, it's not going to see this game. And we do see Special moving from Grand Mac into Battle Mac. Generally, it's the other way around. And the army of Vanya now is moving on and doing what it can. But it is plucked up, plucked down, and slammed. These battles are going to be so these tanks are just going to go down. But this is a crossfire of Cyclones and the army of Vanya is finding itself. Well, it's not a great spot. The Battle Cruiser on the bottom right-hand side will be able to potentially take this base up, but this was the third base of Vanya, so it is pretty well mined. It has been doing a pretty good job of mining itself, and the, the big deal, of course, for Vanya here is sure. He's been trading out. Fairly decent. Look, and again, this is a big bud. We did not, was not able to not drop such below 100 degrees. That last fight. Now there's one battle cruiser holding down, so that is some that is nice. Uh, only two battle cruisers. Three battle cruisers are of course much better than two. Uh, now we have Hellion Hellbat drop. Transforming Hellion drops here under the end of the main and in the, into this what, mid base of mine. Uh, that's pretty cool. And actually, they, they, they're not a great position. The Zerg will just go kill them. We have a couple more Hellbats going, but there's really just not a whole lot of mining here. On in the main, the big thing of course is Vanya has no high. Vanya sitting here on the Lair Zerg against a bunch of mech, and that is, uh, well, I'll tell I'll tell you exactly how, mu how much of a position that the Zerg wants to be in there. Now, the Corruptors have got the Battle Cruisers. The Battle Cruisers do not have their Teleport up, so these Battle Cruisers will go down, and the Battle cru Corruptors, of course, do have to run away, because every lock-on is a dead Corruptor, which is maybe a little bit annoying for the Zerg player, but, you know, good enough. Now, of course, we do have Vanya Zerg, once again, close to Max, running in on the left hand side, each attack that happens here, well, the, the body is further, or the, the Terran stays closer and closer to that max supply count. But it looks like Vanya may be able to file this base down and take the fourth base. Actually, the Vanya can land on top of the tanks. And this is, uh, these are good files, but just at what cost here? The, the, the base doesn't go down. We have a bunch of Blue Flame Hellions now that that upgrade is finally done. A bunch of Cyclones, and this blows the Battle Mac Army. There's just nothing to catch it. Vanya trading horribly here. And of course, we do have Hellions into Hellbats here in the main base. Into the, what's that? The natural of Vanya as well. Now with Drilling Claws out on the way. This is rather interesting. That being said, though, we did see the Corruptors. They were able to snipe the third base here of Special. And they have this, uh, these, these drones, they're not, long, they're not long for this world. See, of course, Special moving up the tech tree pretty well. Finally, really not up there yet. Spy, 
kind of only just halfway done. He is going to go into a chest of damage. I do like this against Battle Max, but I'm less of a fan against Tank Mac. And Special has the ability, absolutely the ability to swap between two. And I'm really interested to see how good these Widow Mines are. So Widow Mines, well, that, that one's going to go down. That's really not going to do a whole lot. But now we do have more and more Widow Mines being built here. Of course, Widow Mines can be reactored out. We do have reactors on some of these factories. So we're, we we have the potential for a special just balloon into this massive Widow Mine count, should he choose to do it. But I think this is just an auxiliary force to uh, make sure uh, the Zerg who's running in can't do a whole lot, etc., etc. Because, you know, Widow Mines, they're not all that great against Ravagers. But anyway, we do have the mass Ravagers, mass Ravagers force of finding now, finding its way on into what was the third base of special and what soon will be again. And it, it should be noted that special is sitting here only on three bases. He is pretty much mined out uh, on almost everything, but this is this is not a fight that Vanya wants at all. These chokes are terrible. Well, even if some of those files do land, and Vanya's now found himself in a pretty good position on the outside of, of this base. Meanwhile, we have the corruptors that looks like they want to go in and snipe the, the fourth base special. And this is actually, I mean, okay, these are going to go in, they're trying to drop some files. Not enough, though, not enough to kill off the army of Special here. And sure, Special this economy is not all that great anymore, but it doesn't really matter as the army of Vanya once again is dead. Corruptor's not really on top of things, and we do have, well, Hylian's in the Hellbats in the bottom right, getting some pretty good damage here as Vanya will be rebuffed once again. And sure, Vanya's heading up economy. Well, as I say that, <laughs> as the workers go down, and that also shrinks once again, but Special has no designs really on a fourth base. Oh, well, as I said, on a fifth base, as I say that he lifts his main on into this fifth base, and this is a pretty defensible fifth base position. It's going to be rather difficult for Vanya to shift the Terran player from that. Should, well, good special be able to get it all successfully entrenched. Now, the good thing for Vanya, of course, is this is a planetary fortress, or this is not. A, this is an orbital, which means that it's maybe not quite as defensible. But Vanya absolutely does, cannot allow our Terran player to get another base, and that's a nice one of my shot. And now we do see a scan. Special is now aware of the army composition of Vanya. And we don't have Furrow yet. Furrow is absolutely something you, something you want, something you need. Now we do have the army of Vanya once again running in. And he's not really doing a great job of sending the things ahead of time. But we do see a potentially some bungles going down here. Vanya files his own structures. And okay, there we go. We do have some girls, but that's not really going to be enough. And we do have the second one. We're on the Everything's going to die here. And Vanya does not get nearly what he needs to get done. He killed two workers. He loses his entire army. Now Vanya down at 95 supply for a second. And sure, he's out mining his opponent. But uh, Special has actually been doing a great job here of keeping on top of these run bys. We have six more workers to go down. And Special now he says, you know what? I have trouble for long enough. I have defended for long enough. It is now my turn to get on the aggressive here. As the tanks are changing up, the battle back has found this. What? Seventh base of Vanya. This external base of Vanya, but one of the few mining ones left. And with the tanks here, with the, with the uh, cyclones here, this, this base is not long before this world. It will go down. Static defense will go down as well. And special for the first time this game is up on supply compared to his Zerg opponents. 18 workers go down. Sure, his army is maybe not up there yet, but everything else is. Special sitting here on 3 2. And Vanya is going to try to do what he can for but there are tanks. They are staggered back. And, well, maybe Vanya has enough to clean this up, actually. But does he have enough of the four and more tanks here? The Vile tanks only going to get one shot off, and now Vanya crushing on into the Special's fifth base. Well, Vanya actually did have enough because back in the open field, it's not all that good, the SCVs are going to be pulled, and Vanya absolutely has to get something done here or well. Because otherwise, Special, I think he just kind of wins. Now, the Malevorator is going to go down immediately, and these, well, this must be careful, Zach. You don't really see that against Mech all that often. And these Ravagers, these Roaches, they're just not dying nearly as fast as you would expect. Nice for a Wolf Force scan, which of course is economic damage. Bonnie now streaming and doing what he can, and the players, they aren't even armor supply, they aren't even worker supply. It's 19 minutes in, both players stuck at around 120 supply. Neither player really able to have the economy that they would like. Well, Bonnie is now able to mine from this bottom right side base. So where do we stand? Special just about to hit 3-3 three, three on mech. Avanya at 1-2-2. Two, two. And a hodgepodge of upgrades here. As uh, these, Hel these Hellions, these Hellbats, they do a pretty good job. And I like that uh, Avanya, whenever he, or especially when not, he's not micro actively microing them, he has transformation servos. 
So these Halbats, well, it just morphs them to make sure they die quicker. Actually, 3-3 three, three Halbats do beat 3-3 three, three Roaches, that's micro, so... 3-3 three, three Halbats, they are nothing to shake a stick at. The Queen will be forced to retreat. So we will see some Roaches somewhere on the defense, but they will be able to get a Queen. And, yeah, not much more than that. But Vanya, he's taking the aggressive bases special now. He says, you know what, if I can get any sort of mineral income out of these bases that are rightfully your special, I'm going to win the game at the end of the day. But if we look at trades here, Vanya... He has traded much worse. Up, lost 11,000 more resources than his Terran opponents. He does, does what he can to reestablish an economy. Actually, nice lock on there. That will just go down, but there are, of course, no lock on now for the Battleback Army. This is not the biggest army for special. Where's the rest of his supply? Okay, yeah. Army on the right side defending things. We have the, the mobile Battleback Army on the left-hand side that, of course, will be microed and most likely will not die to the Road Traffic Drilling Army of, of Vanya. And on the left-hand side, we just have all the tanks to make sure that no run by this base will not die. As it's sitting here at 29 out of 16, the special really needs another base sooner rather than later. But of course, special up on our on army supply really for the first time in this game, and that's that's a big deal. Of course, well the mech the mech army is in fact just bigger bigger or more powerful. Mech units are more powerful than what our Zerg player has. Moving into the 20th ish minute of this game, and we do this liberator is doing a good job just not being dealt with. So, okay, so now we have a couple of neural, neurals on the site. And that is rather, rather nice. It's they're actually doing a good job. They're body blocking the, uh, the, the battle mech army here of our Terran player. But again, these tanks are firing. The miles have really not hit them yet. And these are 3-3 three, three tanks. They are, they are nothing to take a stick out here. They are absolutely terrifying. And the battle mech army able to get on top of all the Ravagers. Vanya's army collapsing. You're seeing only a 28 army supply. And it feels like Special has taken the fight that he needs. This base will not get up. And we do see a couple... A couple of missile turrets here, which of course will allow the troops to recede. And behind that, we do have 22 or three. Oh, it's, it's... Okay, yeah, we did have. A, looks like we had a liberator on the bottom left-hand side as well. We're gonna be able to take care of all of that. Uh, looks like Special is gonna move his third base over to take the to take the fifth because both players are broke. But I gotta say, Avanya, he's a bit more broke than Special. Is sitting here on only 49 workers, 46 total army supply. And Special has been able to take more bases. Vanya just really does not have the upgrades that he wants, that he needs, that he does, he desires. He does not have the tech. I mean, there are no Vipers on the map. Right? There's nothing that allows him to really take this fight. And when you're dealing with battle mech, you want Vipers. You want about six Vipers to be able to just yank all the Cyclones. When you're, when you're dealing with tank mech, you want Vipers. Same thing. Infestors are good, don't get me wrong, but Infestors against tanks, well, even with Neural, tanks out, outrange Neural pretty significantly. And I'm almost surprised we don't see Special move out, but he may be afraid of what happened last game. Where he goes, and he's like, ah, I have the advantage, I'm going to move out, I'm going to take a base. And he lost it, almost his entire army for it. Almost lost, really almost lost the game, because he's almost lost, really, what was his only mining base at that point. So now, of course, we do have more commands to on the way, Special finally has some money again. But these vials are going to drop and kill 10 workers rather easily, and that's really nice here for Vanya. Now we do have the Terran with the pinch position on the way. The SCVs pulled. And that's interesting. I don't know exactly why that's happening. This bundle's gonna hit, but uh, the tanks are now ready to fire. And the tanks are gonna fire with much flop short. The bundles are gonna hit, and that means the violence are gonna hit rather nicely. But uh Vanya running out of his army there we have GG. Special taking the series, taking the tournament. Three to one. Okay. Yeah, mad props to Vanya. He held the cannon rush. It looks like he was he had multiple opportunities, or not the cannon rush, the the proxy 3x looks like he had multiple opportunities to win this game. And well, Vanya looked good. Special just looked better. And with that, Special, he has won this 13th iteration of the Exxon Cup. Congratulations to him. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone else for playing some awesome games. Uh, let's look at the bracket here. I am assume Nina beat Nerazim in the final in the lower bracket. Yeah, Nina two zero. Okay. So with that, I think we're gonna. Do we have enough people to warrant hosting someone up? I don't know. We're gonna do it anyways. And yeah, I'm done for the night. I got work to do. I got to get up early for the King of Battles Cup. And that's that. Thank you so much, for everyone who showed up, who who tuned in. Much love to everyone. Stay safe. Have an excellent morning, afternoon, evening, whatever the case may be. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Have a good night, everyone.